<laughs> Call to order the Douglas Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for Wednesday, May 5th at 7.14 p.m. Um, Roll call vote. Yep. Tonight's tonight, uh, meeting, uh, we have um, myself, Mr. Holland, Mr. F Forget, and Mr. Fitzpatrick, and Mr. Bombara is uh, joining us through Zoom, and Mr. Ticino has an unexcused absence. So the first agenda item is the public hearing for Joseph Bylinski, case number 2021-04-103 Shore Road. It was, the public hearing was advertised in the Worcester Telegram and Gazette and posted at the town hall and reads as follows. The Town of Douglas Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing beginning at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, May 5th, 2021 at the Douglas Municipal Center Community Meeting Room, 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass., to hear the application of Joseph Bylinski. The applicant is appealing a decision pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 8, Appeals and the Douglas Zoning Bylaws by the Building Commissioner's refusal to enforce the zoning bylaws by ordering the demolition and removal of a partially constructed dwelling at 103 Shore Road. The building permit initially issued was revoked because the lot has substantially less frontage and area than is required in an RA zoning district. The property is located at 103 Shore Road, map 300, Parcel 18, a copy of the application may be viewed in the Community Development Department, 29 Depot Street, during, re during regular business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed application should appear at the time and place designated. Is Mr. Bylinski or his representative here? Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Henry Lane on behalf of Mr. Bylinski. You're welcome to sit there if you like, Henry, or you can uh, stand, whatever you prefer. You can be the judge, I'll stand. Okay. Uh, this is uh, probably the fifth, maybe the sixth time we've been here on this matter, so I'm sure you're all very familiar with the facts, but I will summarize them nevertheless. Uh, this initially started about 12 years ago when uh, apparently a former building inspector improvidently issued a building permit for a significantly undersized lot for reasons that are still unclear. But she's no longer with us, so we can't ask her. Uh, that building permit, as you indicated, was revoked shortly after it was granted. Uh, and that revocation was upheld by, upheld by the Superior Court. So that is a final determination that this was, in fact, an illegal building permit. Since that time, we've spent uh, a number of frustrating years trying to get that illegal building removed, uh, but unfortunately because of apparently, apparently some recalcitrance by your appointing authority, uh, that has not been accomplished. And if I was a cynical person, I would suspect that there are less than honorable reasons for the town's refusal to enforce the order that this board issued some years ago, but um, I'll let the public speculate as to what those reasons might be at this point. Nevertheless, uh, this board, as you recall, has already ordered that this building be removed. That was appealed. The appeal was dismissed. So your order still is in force and effect, but for reasons that I can't tell you I really understand, the Massachusetts Appeals Court has decided that if we want to get enforcement, we have to come back. So we are coming back uh, in accordance with the the appeals court's order, we asked the building inspector to order the building removed. The building inspector refused to do that. And I can't say I, you know, I disagree with the fact that he's basically saying you've already ordered it this removed once, so ordering it again probably won't change things. But I would have liked it if he had, in fact, done his job and issued the, issued the order requiring the building to be removed, then followed up with that order. Uh, with whatever action is necessary to see that it's enforced. But apparently the building inspector for, as I say, um, uh, has decided he's not going to do that, which leaves us with the remedy again to ask this board, 
to overrule the building inspector a second time, admittedly a different building inspector. We're now, I guess, on our third one to deal with this issue. But we're asking that you once again overrule the building inspector, issue an order that the building be removed. And since the last time you did that, the person in question decided to ignore your order, uh, I thought maybe perhaps this time around you could put a little more teeth into it. So it occurred to me that under the statute you basically have the authority of the building inspector in your role on appeal. And I think the building inspector has the authority to issue fines. So it occurs to me that perhaps to make this thing move a little bit and to see that your orders are in fact worth something other than the piece of paper they're written on, we could, in, in addition to overruling the building inspector and ordering the building removed, to also impose a fine. And I would suggest something on the order of $300 a day until it's removed on the theory that the property owner has seen fit to ignore this board and the bylaws for about 12 years now. It seems like he's gotten a free ride for a significant period of time, so maybe it's time to impose some teeth uh, to perhaps overcome his recalcitrance to this point. In addition, there was some discussion in the, in the appeals court's decision concerning the authority's ability to enforce the order itself. As I read the statute, the uh, CBA does in fact have authority to uh, enforce the bylaw. And I would suggest that uh, the last time around there was some sort of uh, inconclusive uh, language about Mr. Bylinski's right to enforce your order. And the appeals court said it really wasn't a clear delegation of authority. So I think maybe this time around we remedy that by specifically saying that you're authorizing Mr. Bylinski on behalf of the board to enforce its order. I think that comes within this board's authority and within the statutory uh, uh, framework. So three things I'm asking. Explicitly overrule the building inspector's refusal to enforce and order the building demolished a second time. Impose fines of $300 a day until it's, the building is in fact removed and that you appoint Mr. Bylinski uh, or basically authorize Mr. Belinsky expressly to enforce the order on behalf of the zoning board. I think if those three things are done, we may actually get that building removed in our lifetime. Okay. Does any board members have any questions for Attorney Lane? Sean? Sure. Do you have a copy of the appeals order that you're talking about? I, it's not part of the application. I have it here. Is it? Just 20, the one. It's 22 pages long. Okay. You want to read it? Well, I don't want to bore to death everybody here. I was just curious, but it's not part of the application for some reason. I did not submit it as part of the application, but I do have it. Um, if, I if I can tell, and so it, it, essentially, um, this board has already acted on this exact same request back in November 2014. Um, there, there's a limitation to this board's authority and, and also the uh, building commissioner's authority. Uh, you, you, uh, enforcement is discretionary. Um, however, uh, you reach a point where if you do decide that you want to order that the building uh, comes down, uh, the, the decision-making level moves on to the, uh, the board of selectmen. And in this case, because uh, it, uh, given the lengthy litigation history here, you might need to uh, a, a town meeting authorization or appropriation to increase your attorney's fees because you're in for a long haul uh, if you wanted to pursue this on your own. Uh, as you can see here, we've uh, we've been in court for 12 years on this on this thing, and it wouldn't surprise me if we'd spend another 12 if we decided to um, become the plaintiff that that uh, tries to seat to the demolition of the uh, to the building. Um, as far as the imposition of fines. Uh, there's, an, there's a provision in the uh, building code that allows for fines, uh, but at the end of the day, all you can do is write it down on a piece of paper, uh, and then eventually, in order to collect, I assume in this case, we'd end up having to file suit. So that takes us down. To, it takes us right back to the original issue 
does the town want to spend a, a, a lot of money uh, pursuing what is essentially a, a, a war between two neighbors that don't like each other. Um, in the third, uh, oh, appointing Bylinski uh, to uh, basically uh, stand in town council instead or, or represent the, the zoning board of appeals. Uh, that this board doesn't have that kind of authority. You know, the, the appointment of a town council or, or the authorization of a, authorization of lawsuit would have to be done through um, through the board of selectmen. Um, I just I, I'm not quite sure what the purpose of the request is tonight. Uh, there was a, there was an admission um, by Bylinski in front of the uh, appeals court uh, that this board has already acted uh, in November 2014 uh, by ordering the demolition of the property. Uh, in the appeals court in that decision that we were you know, talking about has said the zoning board has done every single thing within its power uh, to see to the removal of the property uh, the, for, to the removal of the building from the property uh, so I, I think this is just trying to uh, basically reset the clock uh, I assume an appeal would follow if you say no uh, and I assume appeal from Mr. Ticino would follow if you say yes uh, regarding a secondary order, um, but essentially, you've already acted and you've already uh, exerted or exercised all of the authority here uh, when you ordered the building down in November of 2014. Um, so I'm not quite sure where we're going with this, I, um, but I, you know, there's a there's a request before the board, so you have to act on it. Um, but if anybody has any questions, obviously, you know. Be more than happy to answer them. Mike, I, I got an email this afternoon from your office, and it seems both of these parties are headed to court next month. Is that correct? Yeah, so, um, so we, we have essentially this, this exact issue. Uh, they amended their complaint and they filed a third motion for summary judgment, which raised the same issues the, the first two times, and that is whether or not. Uh, Bylinski can compel or, or Bylinski can ask for an order compelling the town to sue the casino to bring the house uh, to bring the house down. Um, we've we've received numerous <laughs> numerous decisions that, that acknowledge the case law, and that is no. Uh, the, the authority to sue is vested in town meeting and through the board of selectmen. Um, so we have. Uh, summary judgment hearing, I believe, on June 24th, uh, which will revisit this issue for, I think, the third time, maybe the fourth time, uh, and, I, and I'm hoping uh, disposes of this case altogether uh, and just and just ends this 12-year uh, saga that we are still uh, dealing with. However, tonight's decision might set the clock where all of a sudden we're going to have an appeal and we're in court on a you know a, another action appealing tonight's decision uh, either way that you go um my hope is we argue this case june 24th we get a decision uh we've already been told that uh by Linsky will likely appeal um but that that was my hope uh that we were getting close to the finish line uh through that uh, third motion for summary judgment um but tonight creates perhaps more procedural issues and further reason to just go to court to argue essentially the same issue that we've been arguing for almost 12 years now. If the board took no action, seeing it's going to court next month, would that, would that be um, prudent? Well, I mean, you don't you don't have to act on on the petition tonight. Uh, you have you know you have your uh, statutory response period. Uh, I, I I mean I think when we had a discussion with Judge Foster today, uh, he had put it down originally for early June and then kind of extended it out to late June, expecting a decision on this petition tonight, uh, so that he could at least have that in the record. Um, so. I, I think in order to stay in the court's good graces, uh, we probably should act on it either way uh, rather than just sit on this. Uh, I don't think the court would look favorably at that. What's the date of next month that they're going? 
Uh, our, our hearing is June 24th. Yeah, do, so um, <clears throat> the uh, 100 days is July is July 1st, so mm -hmm. <clears throat> it wouldn't make much sense to wait until next month because <clears throat> it would still be before you go to court. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And it would expire before the following month. So. Yeah. All right, thank you, Mike. Yeah. Hello. Ken, would you, do you have a, something you'd like to add to this? Just the, the orders were issued. They have, they have copies of the issued orders and for me to reissue the orders again, following the guidance of the zoning board and the selectmen of the town. So, okay. It's just a repetitive to reissue the same order that's already been issued. So your position is there's already a, an order in place and already a standing order in place for, for the building to be removed. Okay. All right. And unfortunately the building inspector is refusing to enforce that order. And that's the frustration. You know, I appreciate what Mr. Kennefeck has to say. The fact of the matter is this has been prolonged by about eight years because the town has refused to enforce the order and the law and it can complain about its legal fees and expenses all it wants. The only reason the town has incurred any fees is because it refuses to issue the order. If any, if at any step along this process, the town attorney had just said, yes, the town agrees the building should come down, it would have been down years ago. But the Board of Selectmen, as they say, for whatever political reasons there may be, refuses to say yes. Furthermore, when I asked the town's administrator, for the legal fees related uh, to its litigation over the last couple of years, the result is zero. It hasn't cost the town a nickel to <laughs> refute to enforce or refuse to enforce this. So the financial argument is nonsense, frankly. It's you know it's a uh, it's a fig leaf. It's not costing the town anything. And furthermore, I specifically told the town we would enforce it for n at no cost to the town, but. They refuse to accept that offer. So it's not expense. They're exercising, allegedly, their discretion to protect a political uh, crony. Apparently, that's all I can suspect. There's no legal reason. There's no financial reason. There is no reason to prolong this except politics, pure and simple. Apparently, we have one set of rules for certain people and another set of rules for other people. Let me give you an example. How much time and energy has this board and the town attorney at the town's expense spent arguing about a shed that was a little bit over the property <coughs> line? Excuse, excuse okay. me, Dan. Yep, go ahead, Mike. I don't want to talk, talk about another case. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, sorry to interrupt you, Henry, but if I understood the attorney correctly, we've exercised all our rights that we have to this point. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the authority to um, order that house torn down. That falls onto the uh, selectmen. We don't have the authority to tell the building commissioner to issue fines. That doesn't fall under our jurisdiction unless I misunderstood what he said. I'm just un unsure what what we could do further at this point. Mm -hmm. I think that well, is, the, uh, I, th I think that his argument goes um, just by what you just recently said, goes back to the selectmen. That's where you should be, not in front of us. Yeah. Mike Kennecuff, so, did you have something? What it, what it, yeah, so what it, you, you do have the order, you have the ability to order that the house be taken down. But, uh, it's essentially, it's, it's not a, you know, some sort of decree that a uh, casino would have to uh, abide by. He could just say no. So it, it, you order it down, if you order it down, the secondary step is you end up having to sue them. Uh, and then you have, you're dealing with all of these, these endless appeals. And, you know, we've already spent 12 years at this now. Uh, and I don't know if there's an appetite to, to initiate that kind of an issue, uh, initiate that kind of litigation, and then just be mired down in another dozen years of litigation. Uh, and, you know, it, I, I, I don't agree that it would be free to the town uh, if we were to prosecute. Right now we're kind of mired down in... Uh, having to defend this case, and we could, we continue to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but they continue to appeal and raise other issues, and 
and uh, it just see it's we're just like in this spiral litigation where we we, we think we almost we're almost out and we just keep getting sucked back in but I don't think there's a lot of appetite to be on the process you know prosecuting in case uh, which is which boils down to uh, you know a, a, a war between two neighbors that just don't get along with each other um, so that's that's the big thing uh, you, you, you can order that the house be taken down but only a judge can force somebody to take the house down and then even then if if he decides that he's not going to take the house down you get a judgment saying hey take the house down you might end up having to look at an appropriation at the with the town actually going in and taking the house down now taxpayers are spending even more money on that i mean you can attach the property but the property's not developable it's too small are you ever going to recover that uh recover the cost uh, there, I mean, we, we've had these cases where towns have taken them down, and uh, it's a tremendous expense. Um, and sometimes you, you, they just don't recover the, the what they spend. So I just wanted to kind of make that clear. It's, uh, you know, you can say take it down, but only a judge can can force or allow it to be taken mm -hmm. down. Dan, can I ask a question? Yeah, Gordon. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Re reading their application, uh, the oh, actually I'm reading the uh, advertisement in the paper. So <laughs> they're appealing the decision of the building commissioner's refusal to enforce the zoning bylaw by ordering the demolition and removal of the uh, dwelling. Mm -hmm. So basically, all we're we're hearing is whether or not we want to tell the building commissioner to issue another demolition order because we're we're not being asked to order the house turned and taken down where we're being asked to to um hear the appeal on the the, the denial of a second request or i guess i don't know how many requests yeah. but a, a, a second order to dem, uh, demolish this house so basically all we we're either going to tell the building commissioner to issue another order or not correct no, that's not correct. I'm asking. So the, um, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the process is uh, if, if, you, if you seek zoning enforcement, you're a resident of a town or a property owner, uh, you, you approach the building commissioner first and say, listen, I think there's an issue, uh, a, a zoning violation over here at this property. Then the uh, building commissioner ends up making a decision whether or not he wants to pursue, uh, the, well, number one, if there's a violation in, in, uh, at all, and then number two, uh, if he wants to you know, start, he wants to do anything to enforce the violation or, or remedy the violation. If he fails to act, then there's an appeal to this board, uh, and then they can overturn the, the decision of the uh, building commissioner. Now, in this case, it, it, it's, you can't say that the building commissioner refused the zoning enforcement request. If you look at the letter, and I think you probably have it in front of you, he, all he did is he wrote back saying, listen, I, I know you're, you're asking for zoning enforcement, but you've already received an order, and there's nothing further than I, that I can do. Um, so there wasn't really a refusal to act. It was, hey, listen, we've already acted, and you already have an issue, uh, 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 an order issued by the town saying take the house down. So it, it wasn't like he was saying no, and he you know, turned a blind eye to the issue. He's just saying you know, hey, I don't understand why you're asking me to do the same thing that we've already acted on. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. I pose a question to uh, it's Mike. I apologize, Mike. I, I, I don't remember your last yeah, name. Yeah. Uh, m my recollection, which could be flawed and could be faulty, was that a long uh, years ago, probably at this point, uh, there was a representation made by council that the decision made by any court did not place any economic burden on the town of Douglas in terms of causing it or having an obligation to tear down anything or expend any funds to tear down anything. Is, am, am I wrong about that? I, did, I, I think you're referring to uh, our, our legal argument, which we've been making since uh, almost 2009 at this point. Um, we cannot be compelled by a court to sue GBI to take the house down. Uh, that would have to be a decision made solely by the town. No, no court uh, can order us to sue somebody. Which is where, kind of where we stand. 
um, you know, the, the town has done everything. It's, it's issued as many orders as it can. The only thing the town hasn't done is, is sue GBI. Uh, but, you know, understandably, you're looking at probably another dozen years of litigation if they decide to go down that road. Okay, anybody else? Is there anybody in the room that wants to make a comment on this case? Attorney Shugru? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, Gerald Shugru, attorney for the casino. Uh, I was at in that conference call today with Mike and uh, also Henry, in which the judge said that he put it over to the 22nd of, uh, of July, uh, June, June. Yes, I'm sorry. But in any event, uh, it, that, the, the essence of that is that the appeals court has basically said to them, uh, you, you know, you've got, in addition to co coming in to that court again, they went back to the district court in Uxbridge and asked for relief there. That, that took place about a, a month ago. The district court of Uxbridge denied him uh, any further relief in that court, uh, mainly because of, uh, you know, the, there was a, a stale request at that time because they had issued a judgment a long time ago. So essentially, we, 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 we go, we're going around the circle again and again. And, and I think it all comes down to what your bylaw says for enforcement. And your enforcement ultimately lies with the selectmen. And the selectmen have voted a number of times not to proceed with this. And why have they done that? I think you've got to look at the history of this. Some of the history, none of you were involved, I wasn't involved, and Henry wasn't involved. You've got 105 Shore Road and 103 Shore Road. 105 Shore Road came before this board and before coming before this board, they went to my client and said to him, look, if you don't object to my rebuilding of this house, I won't object when you want to do anything with your property. My guy foolishly said, yeah, okay, he had nothing in writing, and that's what happened. He, they went in, got their permit, tore down the house, built the same house that you see on our lot on a smaller lot than our lot, and did it and, and, and had it. So now the time comes and my guy goes in and says, hey, I, I want to build now, give me the same thing. The board at that time said, you don't have to be there. We've got an opinion from town council that says you don't need this. There's a letter somewhere, in, it's probably been before your board at some, at some point. And so they immediately, okay, we'll go. They go to the building inspector, gives them, the building inspector at that time gives them the permit, goes and starts building. And then this, this uh, uh, neighbor then uh, applies for stop the permit. You can you don't you don't have the proper zoning, exact zoning as there's that lot. So the, the, it continues. You, all of us know here that once you start construction, you've got to continue on. You've got to get it done within a year. So it, it proceeded on. Probably everything, a lot was done except for a septic system. There's no there's no septic system. Yet. But in any event, then then. Uh, <laughs> The, again, they, they filed to the building inspector and say, stop it, you, you can't do it, and it goes back to the board. The board doesn't make a decision. That decision, decision gets appealed, and that's the basis for the first Superior Court ruling that stopped this whole thing and says, stop the building of that. So that, that's the background of why we're here. And, and it's not that, you know, we've never had the right to build there. We had the right to build there. We built most of this house. And then, then the litigation start, and here, and here we are again. But you've got to go back to your bylaw that says town, town selectmen enforce the bylaws ultimately in this town. That's your bylaw. You want to change it, change your bylaw, but that's what you hear. Thank you. All right. Um, so. and, and just one other thing, I guess, uh, worth mentioning, because. Uh, Yes, it was an offer, and, and generally these are uh, usually a discreet uh, thing just between council. And uh, yes, there was an offer that Mr. Belinsky could take over and, and prosecute uh, uh, an action against Mr. Sinos on, on the uh, town's behalf. However, there was no appetite in, in essentially handing off legal representation uh, to a resident uh, of town who obviously has, uh, you know, a, a personal stake in a case. Um, so that's, I think, one of the, the major reasons uh, that they they really had no interest in trying to go down that road. Uh, they didn't really feel comfortable with Mr. Belinsky uh, essentially making legal decisions on behalf of the town. Okay. 
What's up, boys? Pleasure. Does the board want to make a decision tonight? Is that? Well, I think we need to. No. Okay. All right. Under Mr. Fitzpatrick's reasoning, mathematical reasoning. Mm -hmm. Well, before they go to court, you have yeah. you would have to do something tonight. Yeah. Right. If that if that was the reason why. I don't know. Coming in. Can I speak? Yes. Go ahead. Coming in on the kind of the end of this, after the explanation by Mr. Shiguru that the selectmen are the enforcers of the zoning laws, and this, by reading it, uh, hearing it right, that it's, it's just their decision rather than everybody else that's involved. Yeah. Right. Well, this board voted years ago for it to be, for it to be to take away the building permit and then for it to be taken down and then the, it went to court. The court, yeah, basically backed us saying to demolish it. However, that never happened and I guess we've gone as far as we can go as a, as a board. It was even appealed to us in 2018 and we denied it. Yeah, right. So, um, so I think it's, it's in the selectmen's purview now, right? There's, yeah, there's nothing. We can't tear it. No, nothing we can do. So what they're asking for is to, for us to um, deal with the, with the, um, the building inspectors has said he's not going to issue another, um, another order because there's already one in place to demolish it. So they're asking him to basically do it again. But he doesn't feel that's necessary. There's one already in place. Hmm. So, I mean, I think it's, personally, it's an issue that's in the courts, and maybe Mr. Lane needs to go in front of the Board of Selectmen. I, I, I don't know. I don't think there's anything else we can do. Right. Dan, so, the, uh, the orders don't expire. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, Mike? Uh, no, it, um, it, it doesn't expire, and it, it's, it's been raised, and we've discussed it uh, several times in, in court. And you know, the judge, you know, considers it, you know, an, an active order at this point. So it continues to be an active order. Uh, I see no reason to issue a second order, and I would, sure. I would think that their direction would would be to. Yeah. Go to the selectmen, not to us. Mm -hmm. so, should I move the clo move to close the public hearing? You sure. Sean Wait, Holland, sorry. sorry. Yep. We have a motion by Mr. Holland to close the public hearing. We have a second. Second. <coughs> second by Mr. Fitzpatrick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye Dan Heaney. Aye. Aye. Sean Holland. Aye. Ron Fodgett. You're next, John. Aye, John Lavoie. Aye, Mike Fitzpatrick. Okay, so the public hearing is closed. Now we need a motion on on their request, and the request is they are appealing the decision of the billing inspector to not issue but, another order. So I would move, uh, unless there's further discussion. No, I don't. I please. would move that uh, that we uphold the the letter of the building inspector dated February 23rd, 2021. No. No. Is that the way to do it? Because it has to be in a positive manner. So right, and I guess that would be saying. I thought that was positive. Uh, is that correct, Mike? I I, I kind of I couldn't hear. I think that but, was, was Sean the one that made the order. Yeah, I, I Sean wants to here. to uphold the um, order of the letter of the letter that was issued in 2014. No, to February 23rd, 2021. Oh, 2021. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. I, I think that would be fine. I mean, it, it's an appeal of that written decision, um, so I, I, I think that's fine for, as far as the motion. Okay. Second. Right. Could you like a question? Yeah, what, go ahead, what does that do? What, what, are you, what are you doing here now? <laughs> if anybody knows that I'm, secret I'm, answer, I'm, that'd be I'm good. I'm saying that we should uphold this letter. We should uphold the findings of the building inspector in that letter. So 
the decision would essentially reiterate uh, the letter from the building commissioner. Correct. And we, you know, I, I can put a decision together. And uh, how often do you meet? Is it every two weeks or every month? No, once one, a month. Once a month. The uh, once first month. first Wednesday of each month. Oh, okay. So in the meantime, I can put I can put uh, a letter together. Or I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, we haven't voted finished voting voted yet. Yeah. Like. I'm sorry. Yeah. No problem. I'm going to vote against that. Um, no, I just I couldn't hear you for a second. I, I apologize. I don't know for some reason I couldn't yeah. get on the Zoom. No, that's uh, okay. Can you just repeat what you had said. Yeah, so all we we just made a motion to um, Sean made a motion to uphold the letter by the building commissioner, and I am put in yes. a second. So we haven't voted as of yet. Ronnie was just yes. looking yes. at the letter to make sure it was clear. Yes, okay. it's still not clear to me. What? Well, Ronnie's still not clear. What, what this is doing? What are we doing here? Well, um, Mr. Lane and his client are asked the building inspector to issue another enforcement to demolish and remove the partially built building. Yeah. Which he's already, uh, was already been done. Okay. So they're asking him to do it again. And he's saying, so I, go ahead, Mike. I, I, I think, I think essentially what the motion is, is you're, you're uh, and it's kind of nuanced because uh, we've already run through this exercise before, but I think Essentially, the appeal is denied, and you referred back to the decision 2014, which is what the building, um, uh, Mr. Frazier's uh, letter said. Uh, you know, I'm not going to act because you know you already have an order in hand. So, I, I mean, I think I could put a decision together that kind of says that. Yeah. Uh, but essentially, would, I guess the appeal would be denied because the relief has already been granted. Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie's just one to understand what we're. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to put together. No, it's, believe me, this is this is not a <laughs> not a typical situation. You don't you don't see these that, so, uh, very often, if ever. I'm sorry, I can't I can't follow it. I, I just so, what am I missing? I so, so there was a demolition order issued in 2014. Yeah. Um, the applicant came in uh, to the building commissioner and asked him to issue a, a second letter. And he refused because there's already one standing, and it doesn't expire, so it's a valid request. Okay. So um, they appealed to us to see if we would um, overturn his le his opinion and have him issue a second demolition order. But there's already one in place, so now there's a there's a motion on the table to uphold his decision that he's not going to issue a second letter because there is one in place already. Oh, okay. So that's all right. you're not going to. That's it. You're not going to issue another letter because there's already there's one. already one there. Oh, yeah. So. And we sh should say that it was denying the appeal. I apologize. I saw amend my up. <laughs> so I would no 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 no. I, it's not typical. I would, so so I, would, I, I guess I would withdraw my 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 first motion. I'd say that um, I move that the board deny the appeal uh, of the uh, uh, is it Mr. Mrs. Bylinski? Yes. Um, yeah. That's by by the It's not supposed to be done in a positive. Ooh, yeah, but, yeah, but I, I, it doesn't have to be. I don't think. Well, that's where we've been doing it. So, them both. Yeah, it's it's not easy. Believe me, it's not. <laughs> no, we it's not easy to wrap your head around. This thing's been bouncing around the court for 12 years, and we're trying to sum it up in a 20-minute okay. discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, but it, it, the, it, it, does the motion need to be in a positive manner? Does the motion need to be in a positive manner, Mike? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would suggest that uh, yeah. you're either going to yeah. uh, want to say that the appeal is either denied or, or, or allowed. Um, but, I, I mean, I, I think what Sean's saying is it's denied. Uh, but on the grounds that the relief requested has already been afforded, which I, I think is uh, sufficient, I, which I think is where you're going with it. Yeah. Right. So um, if you, you've already you've already been through this exercise. You already issued an order. I'm just trying to get the motion straight yeah. so we can right. we yeah. can move forward. That's all. So uh, we yeah. have a room full of people I, that are falling asleep. <laughs> so if you can make an. A motion I'm to. Not, so I was withdraw my my prior two motions. Okay. Uh, I move. That we did not. Uh, that we. Oh no! I move that we uphold the appeal 
of the Bylinskys, um, of their order for to the building inspector, which would mean that a no vote would be to deny the appeal, correct? That's in the affirmative, and that would therefore be <laughs> appropriate, correct? <laughs> Where's town council? Right there. <laughs> I thought I had it a minute ago, Sean. I, I apologize, Fitzpatrick. I, I, you know what? I withdraw that, and I will no, be no. silent. I will no, 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 no. Would it be would it be uh, feasible to just table about, this then? Could could I uh, could you withdraw that? I, oh, I did. I withdraw. Right. I withdraw all my prior motions. So I I, I think I think it's only a, it's almost a matter of semantics. So you, yeah, I know that. I, I think I got this, Mike. I think I think I got it. Yeah. So um, I, I move to uh, approve the appeal um, by Mr. Belinsky on the uh, to overturn the denial letter of uh, the building commissioner for the demolition and removal of the constructed dwelling at 103 Shore Road. Okay. So, that sound right? Yeah. So yeah. yes vote means we that, we'll that let them have the they win the appeal. Correct. A no vote means in the appeal. We're gonna let things stay the way they are. Correct. And deny the appeal. Mm -hmm. And the appeal is uh, is what? What's the wording on the appeal? If we vote yes, we're instructing the building commissioner to issue a second denial letter. If we vote no, then his his decision stays intact. I don't know. No, I. Uh, you Ron, it's not I, an I easement. Mean, no, I'm just making sure that you understand what it's. Uh, everybody's getting confused on this now, but. Um, it has. It should be done in a positive manner. That's why it gets we always switched around. Do them in a positive manner, and that way, everybody's knows that a yes vote is is to grant it, and a no matter what the case is, and a no vote is to deny it. Right. Deny the the appeal. The so if you say yes, you're going with the applicant. Appeal. If you say no, you're going against the applicant, basically. And in this case, the applicant is Mr. Balinski, represented by Mr. Lane. All right, uh, I'm still not clear on it. So yeah, take the vote. I'm going to abstain. Uh, John, are you all set? Yes, sir. I'm all set. I need a, We need a second. Okay. I second. All right. So we have a motion by Mr. Fitzpatrick, seconded by Mr. Holland. And the motion is to approve the appeal made by Mr. Bylinski of, of, the, of the building inspector's decision not to issue another, another Not to denial. issue another. Another denial because there's already one in place. Denial is to tear down the building? Oh. Um, well, that's actually in the courts. That's really in the courts. There's already a standing order in that. Yeah. What they're looking for is a, a second one to be done for whatever reason. Um, so if you say yes, then you're, you're granting their appeal. If you say no, then you're denying their appeal. Right. <clears throat> is everybody ready to vote? I'm ready to vote. Okay. Ready to vote. All right. I'm going to say. All in favor of granting the appeal? Say aye. None heard. All opposed? Aye. 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 Okay. Do you need that by aye, Sean Holland? Or do you yeah. 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 Okay, so. Ronnie? I'm going to stay abstain. I, I, okay. I still Ron, can't get Ron this. Ron, Ford, abstain. Yeah. John? John Barr, aye. Mike Fitzpatrick, aye. Dan Heaney, aye. Okay, so the appeal is denied. Thank and for the record, Mr. Forget um, abstained from the vote. Thank you. That was a tough one to follow, Ron, so don't feel. <laughs> ah, boy, I'll tell you. After all that, I'm taking a break. I have to recruit myself in the next one. All right. Okay. Um, 
right. so, I think we're good uh, with you now, Mike, unless Dan needs you. Okay. It's, uh, Dan, just ask uh, Maria to send me the minutes when she starts putting them together, and I'll, I'll start drafting the uh, decision for you guys to take a look at. That That's where we're going to run into a little trouble. We don't have a minute taker. Right. Oh, you don't? Okay. No. Well, I'll sorry. talk to Dan tomorrow just to make sure I have uh, the vote and everything okay. uh, correct. Yep. Um, you know, right. As far as the... Uh, Members and everything. Okay, you can reach me on my cell tomorrow, Mike. It's, t it's tough on my. T it's tough on his cell phone <laughs> with a speakerphone. So. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, Dan. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank good you, guys. Have a night. Bye. Oh wow. Okay. I'll wait until you announce it, then I'll recuse myself. Okay. The next agenda item is. There's a public hearing for Scott Fontaine and Tina Cantone, case number 2021-0583 Webster Street. And it was advertised in the Telegram and Gazette and posted in the town hall, and it read as follows. The Town of Douglas Zoning Board of Appeals will be holding a public hearing beginning at 7 p.m. Wednesday, May 5th, 2021 at the Douglas Municipal Center Community Meeting Room, 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass., to hear the following application. Scott Fontaine and Tina Cantone are requesting a variance pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 10, and the Douglas Zoning Bylaws, Section 4.1.3, Appendix B, Dimensional Regulations to Construct a 34 by 30 two-car garage with storage space on the side with an eight-foot breezeway to the main house in an RC2 zone district. The proposed side yard setback requirement is 25 feet and 6.92 feet is proposed. The property is located at 83 Webster Street, map 199, parcel 16. A copy of the application may be viewed in the Community Development Department, 29 Depot Street, during regular business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed application should appear at the time and place designated. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself. Okay, for the record, Mr. Fitzpatrick is going to recuse himself on this case. Is the applicant or their representative here? Yes, we're oh. here. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. All right. So you, you have the floor if you want to uh, give us a brief description of what your application is about. Uh, we purchased this property in late uh, 2013, and uh, since then we, we have grown, and uh, I have a young son, and he's getting bigger. Uh, our house is small. Uh, his bedroom is a, is a tiny room, and as he's growing, uh, he's kind of growing out of it. And now at the times where everybody's working from home, um, Tina here is now living in our living room, working in an office, so we would like to turn his bedroom into the office and give him our bedroom, which therefore the new bedroom over the garage will be the master bedroom slash uh, gym workout area. And the way our, and I guess the way our property is laid out, um, would we require a variance to do any type of construction um, to this degree. We've scaled it back already um, to try to make it within the zoning area, and um, our driveway is a hardship. We if we push it forward, where we're more within the almost within the range, I think. Like 23. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it comes a steep incline, and it would be dangerous for us to go into a garage coming right. out the driveway. So you'd be driving at a crazy angle. Okay. Anything else? Um, off the top of the not no. Uh, just we put growth, and um, that's about it. There's more space. We don't have much for storage in this house either. Okay. Is, do any board members have any questions for the applicant? Uh, I, is this on a two-acre lot, or is this? Uh, um, 
Yeah, there was a plot plan in our package here. The application, I think, says this. Yeah, so that's a two, two square feet. Yeah, that's a two acre lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. I have to say, in the cases I've been involved in, in the past, we, we've, I don't know if we've ever, or rarely have we gone less than half the requirement. The requirement's 25. They want to go to just over six. So, um, I mean, we got our neighbor, we, we talked to the neighbor and we told them all about it. And in the packet, we, we have a signed letter from the neighbor literally next door that will be seeing this garage and they have no issue with the, right. the situation whatsoever. Yep, I agree. I did read that. And it, and it is it, even only in the corner that it's the six, right? I don't know how the variance laws work, but yeah. some of it's 23. It's the closest point. We have to go by the closest point. Right. You know, and uh, you know, my take on it is if everybody in town was allowed to build six feet from the lot line, we'd have to change it to the city of Douglas instead of the town of Douglas. So, um, and it is basically a three-car garage. It's listed as a two, but the size is a, is a three-car garage. Um, I, don't know. I don't know how the other members feel about it, but it's. You know. I, I don't. I. I'd love to give them an opportunity if they wanted to think about it. Um, I, I'm not sure how they qualify for a variance by the shape of this lot. When I look at this lot, this doesn't look like any, strangely, it's not a pork chop lot. It's not funny shaped, it's not zigzagged. It doesn't have a small chunk, you know, at the very beginning and then widens out in the end. It seems to be a relatively, I mean, rectangular lot from the plan that you submitted. Um, so so I, I'm not sure what, that we would have the ability to, to give them a variance on the arguments that they put forth. I, 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 unless I'm missing something. And I no, want to miss something because I don't want to be difficult. I'm right. reasonably difficult. No, I, no I, I agree. I mean, I, if that addition was whatever, a, a, the size of a normal two-car garage with a breezeway, it would be somewhere in the vicinity of 18 feet away from the lot line, requiring only a variance of 7 feet. They're looking for a variance of Nine, uh, almost 20 feet, 19 feet. So I'm. Um, is there anybody in the room that wants to make a comment or has any issue on the case we're currently hearing? Okay. Um. There are, just so you know, I just, uh, there are a couple options. If if the board takes a vote and it is denied, then you would not be able to come in front of the board again for two years. If you wanted to continue the hearing and rethink your proposal, um, it's sounding to me like you don't have the votes to 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 get this variance. If you want to recon why you feel it's a not a it's a rectangular property line because it's it is kind of odd shaped the way we got it surveyed and the way it was explained to us. I, if I may, yeah, go right ahead. I believe that I don't know if you can see it, but this is the plan that was submitted. Do I have the wrong map? That is the plot that you submitted, correct? The plan you submitted. Yep. I'm gonna say it is. I can't really can't see, see it. It, it is. I, I believe it, that it is. It is. It, it's not. It's not an. It's not an exact rectangle. Um, I, I see that it, it, it junks out. It juts out a bit. But that is an, an unusual shape for a lot in the town of Douglas. I don't think. 
uh, and certainly in terms of lots that we've seen. There might be other arguments that can be made about this, about the lot, which is, but but at least as proposed at the moment, if the only thing is the shape of the lot, I, I mean, I, I don't know that I would vote to say that that's grounds for a variance. Because there's a bunch of different grounds for a variance. Which is, which is why I don't know if you want us to take a vote today or if you wanted to possibly continue the matter and, and, and think about those arguments. But I mean, I, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, if I could. Okay, go ahead, John, you have the floor. I just said I'm just gonna to talk to the applicant. The way I look at this thing is the two car garage that's under, of course, and the additional material on the top. Yeah, I'm looking at the plans now. If you eliminate part of that right side of that um, building, I projected that you would still be, you would come out to about 12 feet, I believe. Uh, Mike, am I right? Uh, he's not uh, participating in this. So no, Mike, Mike recused himself. Okay, yep, that's right too, I'm sorry. So anyway, I'm just talking to the applicant. Um, I would say, this is me, uh, I would probably think about what we just, uh, what I just said in regards to the whole right side. If you eliminate that, you'll be out, I think it was over 12 and a half feet instead of the six feet, you know, so I wanted to consider that. So in order to do so, you'd have to um, postpone this meeting for yourself and reconsider the plans that you submitted to us. I'm sorry, we cannot hear a word what she's just said. Yeah. It was too echoey. Okay. Um, but for the most part, he's, he doesn't appear to be in favor of, of you building within six feet of the lot line. Okay. I'm just clearly uh, summarizing that, but. Yeah, summarize that. Can you hear me okay? Um, I, I can hear you, John, but apparently it's not going through to the people that are on on Zoom. We can hear, right. we can hear bits and pieces, but it kind of breaks up a little bit. I can repeat it. The two cars to continue this and look at the right One hand second, side. Sir. If you could cut that back just to have a two car garage, that would be like 12 and a half feet away from the property line instead of only six. What I'm saying is you want to maybe re re rethink your uh, application and the drawings that you submitted. As um, the chairman has said, if we do deny it tonight, you can't come back to us for two years. Right, yeah, we heard them say the two years before. Yeah, right. I, I'm, just, I'm just suggesting maybe you should rethink the plans that you have. So in that case, we should just continue it and, and think about how we should get, do it otherwise. Right. Yes. Could continue the hearing for th till next month, and if yes. you came back with a revised plan that was more, more, it wasn't so close to the lot line. I, I think sounds like there's a you know reasonably good chance that it would be approved. But as it's proposed now, one second, go ahead, Ron. Uh, the lot line. Um, What's what's on the next lot uh, where it shows a shed? Is that on someone else's property, right? Yeah, that's yeah. on the neighbors. Yep. Yeah. Right. And but I that actually I put that up years ago. Um, nobody lived in the house next to us for like 15 years. It was condemned or something. And I had a plot plan that somebody drew up years ago, and I found markers, and I thought that was my property. So I put a woodshed there. I have since taken that down. But I thought that was on my property at the time until we had a survey recently. Okay, so that shed is not... That's not there. That's anymore. not there, yeah. Right. Um, but is that a, where that shed was that's torn down? Oh, this is uh, an, another family there. Is that where that house was torn down right on 16 or? No, they rebuilt it. They rebuilt it? Yeah. yeah, that's the property of the letter that we have in the document from our neighbors. Okay. That's their residence. Okay. What have they... 
Talk, well, talk to the neighbors? What do the neighbors think? Well, they, the there's a letter from one of the neighbors saying that they're okay with it. But, you know, this neighbors ain't got a problem with it. I ain't got a problem with it. Well, except it's such a, such a trend for everybody else. And if uh, everybody I comes know. in and wants the same relief, then we're, then we become a city. <laughs> That's but between good neighbors and bad neighbors, I guess. Yeah, of course, they may not always be the neighbor. Yeah. Neither may the other person may not either, but yeah. in any event. Um, so in order to get the variance, you, um, you need to get four votes. And we have four members that are voting, and it appears that you do not have the four votes tonight. Um, but we can bring it to a vote and find out. Or you can uh, request a continuance, rethink it, and uh, come back. Where you know at least um, three members have have expressed concerns about six feet just being too close to the lot line. Um, so and the planning. And I agree. I think we're going to request a continuance. But can I ask a question? I mean, Certainly. we have two cars now. The intent for this, aside for the bedroom usage and the office that I now require because my office closed and I'm fully remote, um, we needed storage. We don't have a lot of space for storage. So do you think only, your recommendation sure. is we just okay. need to do away with that third space completely? Um, and I'm only going by, by recent history, or not not so much recent, but past history is it's, it's been difficult for people to get a variance if they're looking to be less than half the required distance. If, if the required distance is 25 and you come in at 12, it appears that there's a reasonably good chance you'd get it. If the required sideline yet distance is 25 and you come in at 6, likelihood is you'd, you wouldn't get it. So, I mean, I, I'm certainly not here to tell you what to do, but I'm just, you know, I... I doing, the, doing the continuance, is that man, uh, mandatory for next month, or is that, can we do two or three months down the road, or how does that work? Um, you, could, you could ask for a continuance for a couple of months. Um, you'd have to give us a, you'd have to come into the office and sign an extension for us to make a decision because we are required to make a decision within so many days of your application. And um, if you're going to continue for a couple months, then you need to give us additional time to make the decision. So... Does this have to repost in the paper and all that as well? No. If you come back with something that is further from the lot line than what was advertised, it does not have to be re-advertised. Okay. So. Um, okay, I guess we just have to come in and just figure out how much time we have to get back to you. I mean, we don't want to continue for months, but we also need the time to get with the architect and redraw up the plans and all that. So. Right, and then we would need, a, a, if, if you were going to move it further from the lot line, we'd just need you to get a revised plot plan because we do refer to the plans and the house plans and the plot plans in every decision to make it easy for the billing commissioner to enforce. He knows what was approved, exactly what was approved, and he can more easily do his, his job. So we could, um, well, we, Ron, did you Yeah, I just got a question. Uh, how critical is the, um, I'm looking at the, uh, the 42 by 30, by 30, how critical is that 42 foot dimension, does that uh, cause a lot of problems to move it a little further away from the property line? Well, we have a breezeway there because just past that we have pool doors that go to our, our pool area. You have what, please? What do you have there? We have the breezeway. Yeah. Uh, the reason for the breezeway is because we have a pool. So we needed direct access to the pool without having to go all the way around the garage to get into it from outside. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. But.
So um, we could give you a, a continuance until our July meeting if you think you need 60 days to do that. Do you, um, do you know what the deadline is? I think it was in a couple weeks, right? Oh, uh, no. June meeting? Um, let me see. Second. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. We, um, actually, the decision date is July 23rd. But we would still ask you to give us a two-month extension if you're going to extend it for two months because we don't know anything could happen July 23rd. If we didn't have a meeting because we couldn't get a quorum, things of that nature. So, uh, um, you know, we I certainly... Mean, I was hoping to do June, but I just I still don't get, I guess I don't understand how long we have to give the information to you to prepare for the June meeting. Because it sounds a little different than what we had to, all the paperwork we had to do the last time. Yep. So we may be able to get with the architect quick enough to get to you. I just, I just don't know how much time we have for June. Mm -hmm. Um... Mr. Chairman, should we suggest uh, July then? Y yes, John, that's what we've been talking about is July and... Um, yeah, I, mean, so I would ask them if they want to postpone the postpone until a July meeting. So we'll have, you know, six or eight weeks to deal with this. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then they'll be distributed to the members, and we can review it and and generate any questions that we may have prior to the meeting. Okay, that sounds good. And you said we have to come down and pick up a form for this. Um, you'd have to grant us a two-month continuance to make the decision, and I don't believe we would need that. But that's just the protocol. If we give you a two month, a one month extension, you give us a one month extension. If we give you a two month extension, I, I think the question posed probably is the physicality of that. The right. Building's closed, right? How right. Do, we do that. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not being. Yeah. I apologize. No, I understand. Um, Can they fax it? But that's that. I would think. Yeah, Maria has a, their contact information. I, I guess she could. Or email it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have um, our administrative person's email, Maria LaJoy? Yeah. Maria, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you would agree to send her an email just stating that, um, that your will extend a decision date until September 23rd, then we could grant you a continuance for two months and and we'll all be good. And, and I, I truly don't believe it. I think if you come in with a proposal that's not so close to the lot line, I think it can get resolved at the next meeting that you come to. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's what we want. That's what we want to get this done sooner than later. Understood. Yeah. So I, I mean, if, like I said, I just don't know how quickly you need the information. I don't know what's going on with June. Are you not having a June meeting? Is no, no, we're having thing? we're having a June meeting, the first Wednesday in June. If you so think that you could be, do you need the information for us to be in the June meeting? We would like it two weeks prior to the meeting, okay. so that would give you a, approximately two weeks. And all we would need is a new house plan, and a new plot plan. Everything else okay. would stay the same. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, so I think we're good for the June if we can, we can get a continuance till then. Okay, so you're requesting a continuance till our June meeting, which is the first Wednesday in June. I apologize, I don't have a calendar in front of me. That's okay. If I move, we continue this hearing until the first uh, meeting in June. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Holland. Second. Second by Mr. Forgett to continue this public hearing until our meeting in June, which is the first Wednesday of June. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Hi, Ron Forget. Hi, John Romano. Okay, great. So, um, if you come in with a, I guess a, a reduced size addition and a new plot plan, we certainly will consider your your request at our June meeting. Mr. Chairman, uh, June meeting on uh, June second. Oh, that meeting would be June second. Okay. Great. Very good. Thank you, and uh, Thanks. we'll see Thank you, in, you. See you in June. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Good night. The next agenda item uh, is a public hearing for Kurt, and I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Newsel. Newsel. Newsel, okay. And that is uh, case number 2021-06, 79 North Street. The date of the application is April 14th, 2021. And this was advertised in the Telegram and Gazette and also posted in the town hall. And the advertisement read, read as follows. The Town of Douglas Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing beginning at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, May 5th, 2021 in the Douglas Municipal Center, 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass., to hear the following application. <coughs> Kurt Newsel is requesting a special permit in a village residential R VR zone district pursuant to the Douglas Zoning Bylaws, Section 3.4.3, non-conforming structures to add a 12 by 16 foot deck with access to the side door of the residence. Existing steps are within 15 feet as would be the deck access on the property located at 29 North Street. Assessors, I'm sorry, 79, thank you. Assessors map 137, parcel 113. A copy of the application may be viewed at the Community Development Department during regular business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed application should appear at the time and place designated. Uh, I brought in some additional photos. Yeah, um, I just want oh, to I'm mention sorry. something. I'm yeah, sorry. no, that's fine. No, you're not doing anything else. I just want to mention something before we get started. Mm -hmm. His application says that he's going to provide 8.1 feet. That's his measurement to the house on this. He hand drew in the deck, yep. and the deck appears to be less than 8.1 feet. Okay. So right. if we hear it according to his application, right. he won't be able to put it where he's mm -hmm. planning to. Yep. I look at that one. To the corner of the house. Right. So he's probably going to be five feet from the property line. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we we can't we staff, can't give I'm we sorry. can't give you less than what's advertised. Oh, That's I why I'm bringing it up. I see. Yeah. Yeah. The existing step, I think. Which which I think. Uh, show it a little better. That's the existing step. Oh no, no, I get, I get all okay. that. But what you're yeah. saying on here is you're going to build the uh, the new deck 8.1 feet from the property line, and the corner of your house is 8.1 feet from the property line. The, the, the front, the front right corner, according to this, is 8.1. Okay. But this this walkway that you're going to go to the deck oh, is yeah. closer to the lot line okay. than the 8.1. Okay. And so if we, we approve that, we can't you know. grant something that's closer than what was advertised. I see. So, so we, it was advertised at 8.1. Okay. So and so there's here. no measurement here and that we really need one. And that's what the advertisement should have read is. Okay. So continuance uh, and get the measurement right. It, but yeah. what do you do with this? If, if he's less than 8.1 feet. Mm -hmm. Does this need to be re-advertised? If it's less than what was originally advertised, it does. Yeah. It does. I, mean, I only brought this up because am, this would no, have been a big problem for you. If am, we yeah. approve that at 8.1 feet, yeah. right. Ken would have went out there and said, well, <laughs> you're five eight feet. feet from the property line. Now now you got to take it down. Now you're in, right. you're in a problem. Do you know what that dimension is going to be? How wide is that walkway that's going... The existing walkway is just under five feet. It's approximately four foot eleven. 
Yeah, so that would. We're talking about the, this is the. Yeah, that platform, that cement. Right platform. here? Yeah, the bricks. Yeah. 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 He has a picture of it right there. It's a pretty big step. You got another one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. If you'd hand one down. So, um. I have a photo, a photo from the front, actually, also, that might. You could almost scale it. I drew the lot line on based on the oh, stakes yeah. from the survey. Yeah, but see, this is what. No, I understand. I'll show you, Dan. It is from the front of your house to here, if it's eight feet. Right. So that's probably. You're like three or four feet from the property line. So you're looking to do basically what your neighbor has. Essentially, right. yes. Right. Yeah. Right. But if. If we we I, I understand that's yeah, we can't give you anything closer than what was out. Somebody could appeal it, and then you. I understand. Be, be dead in the water. It's my mistake. So. Um, and if that you said is about five feet now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and what what we like to see is a actual certified plot plan that shows the dimension right. for real on it. Yeah. Because this is a mistake happen like this when you hand draw them in because it's not the scale, so it yeah. Yeah. it could appear that it's right, but it's not necessarily. I, I went. I believe yeah. he showed the step on the plot plan, so I went literally off of the step, right, and went straight back. Doesn't the, I apologize? No. Yeah, go ahead, Sean. The, I, and I, I will. I will never argue with Mr. Fitzpatrick in terms of details. So I apologize in advance if I'm mistaken. No, that's okay. That's okay. We, you, it's just you request that it be less than the 15-foot setback, and the public notice that was met, that was issued. So the public notice doesn't include the eight-foot language, or five-foot language, or any type of language along those lines. Simply that it be. Am I wrong? Did no, I on, the, on the second page of the application, it says. No, no, I agree. No, I'm, I'm talking, about talking about the. Uh, oh, so, yeah. so he went and had to. Uh, I'm just re-advertise it, but he would have to correct this application, no? Hmm. Wait, I don't know. That's. Uh, At least you gave us a unique one this time. You trying to outdo the last guy? <laughs> I apologize, honestly, it's an oversight. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just messing. I, I'm just messing. Question, you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> if I were, as far like dug steps, if I were to leave the existing and and did landscaping steps to the backyard and just did a patio, does that require a special permit? No, well, it's part of this. Would become no. part of the structure. He's already out there. So. I, I could yeah. just do that. No, I don't believe so. That would no. be still be part of a structure, right? Uh, it, he's talking about it, the access from his if, side door to the deck. If that was made out of no, you're putting a, a no, patio. No, he's putting a ground level patio and then steps down the slope that you can see in that picture from the backyard. Just put a just patio on ground steps level steps and build a patio at grade in the backyard. If the structure is attached to the house, then it needs a building permit. If it's a landscaping. Right. It, so, it, it no. Would just so be, your answer is no. You don't need one. Okay. Just curious. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I could go in that direction instead if it. That's yeah. I mean, in the application, it clearly says 8.1. 8 the advertisement well, is a little vague. Yeah, and I just bring it because I didn't want him to. No, you don't want him caught in a pickle with this thing. We approve right. it. And then. I appreciate that. <coughs> That guy over there. I'm sorry. That guy over there can go over and over. Right. Um. What'd you say, John? I said it's just a technical error that yep. he made. Yep. You know, the foot. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, it's just the way. Even though it was uh, Sean corrected me in the way it was advertised, if anybody viewed the application at the community yeah. development as in the advertisement, then they could interpret it as being eight feet off the property line. Yeah. So oh, I, yeah. I, I saved some face with that, even though Sean tried but to get it. Mr. Fitzpatrick, it's never a correction. <laughs> All right. So um, I don't know if you want to change your application 
And um, how does that? Would I ask for a continuance from here and revise the application? Right. Yeah. Right. Continue it the next month. And no, no, no. Does the board think it needs to be re-advertised? The advertisement should have been more uh, specific. Uh, yeah, it should have been. Yeah, it, it wasn't advertised properly. I, I wouldn't think that he needs to re-advertise because, okay. as Sean clearly pointed out, that it's showing that it's going to be less than the 15-foot setback. I'm not sure if I can ask this question. Could you give me an idea what the board's disposition might be? On what we don't have. No, a we, yeah, we, I mean, based on the application. I don't. Okay. No, based, based off of your application, you're asking for eight feet. Sorry, Dan. Yeah. Right. You're asking for eight feet, and we're clearly less than that. It could be I three or four or five feet. That. I don't actually have. It. You get eight point one feet. Oh yeah, I went by the setback of the house. Actually. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, so I, that's, that's what, what I'm I saying. By so setback, I, I didn't understand what. Mm -hmm. We don't even know what that dimension is, so right. we couldn't even grant yeah. anything anyways. Because You'd we have don't to really figure it out. It I mean, I, if you called this guy, this fellow, and said, "Hey, yeah, I'm going to," go ahead, John. Yeah, um, in regards to that step that's already up on that side of the house, he matches his neighbors, of course. But I think he would said that you're up like five foot eleven, four foot eleven, four foot eleven. Yes. Sir. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that issue there is not. Nothing to challenge, if you know what I mean, because you're already out there with that step. So, yeah. The problem is, John, we don't know what the actual dimension is, so how do we give a variance on that? No, exactly. Yeah, I didn't see that when I went up to see him. I just was looking what he wanted yeah. to do. And we talked about the him coming out and leaving at the same length coming out, you know, so, right. and just scoot into the backyard. Right. Yeah. So I think if you just if you just revise the application, so we can hear it next month. But you know what? Make just ask for what you need and 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 don't right. short yourself because I I understand completely now. What I, and it, honestly, it's an honest mistake. When when by setback, I understand. thought you meant the closest setback on the existing dwelling, not the what I was. It would be the of big, course. Existing yeah, setback is great, that. but then we need the proposed setback, of course, which would be closer than eight foot one. So I just determine what it's going to be, and yeah. we would like to get a, just have the guy revise the, your plot plans, saying yeah. it's going to be four foot eight or whatever yeah, it's going to I mean, be I from the lot line. Literally pull a string between the stakes and measure it. Well, we we I, I understand we need, your preference, and that will be done. Yeah, no, yeah, we yeah. Want. You know what? Because yeah. we've had cases where people did it themselves, and then it was they were off by. Sure. A bit, Understood. and then their variance is no good because they have right. a variance to be 20 feet away and they're 18. Now, is, it, is this a, a variance or a special permit? This, this is a special permit, okay. but we yeah. still need okay. that information because yeah. okay. you have a pre-existing non-conforming structure. Right. So, I so you're expanding it, so you need a variance. I mean, I'm sorry, you need a special permit, not a variance. Now, I, again, I'm not sure if I can ask this question. I'll just go ahead and ask. Oh, you can ask. Um, if next month I bring this in and the board's disposition is such that, yeah, okay, we'll allow this deck, mm -hmm. how long from that time? It's 21 days from the date that it's filed with the town clerk. Okay. After the decision is made. After the, after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. And then we try to get the decisions as quickly as we can to the town clerk, but okay. we have part-time office help. We have a town council that... Okay. It gets typed up. We all need to sign it, You're right? And okay. then it gets stamped. Yeah, we will get it to the town clerk as quickly as possible. Okay. And then a 21-day yeah, appeal period. And at that time, you know, ballpark. the permit could be I'm issued. Looking at next fall or sometime over the summer. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, ideally, you'd hopefully it would ha be able to do it within 30 days or so after okay. Okay. next meeting. So that said, I guess I would request a continuance. Yep. And I'll get the, the my surveyor to correctly draw the. Uh, okay, and we would just ask, and again, I don't think we need it. It's just a procedure. If we give you a 30-day continuance, we need to get a 30-day continuance on the decision. We'll see Marie and. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can do it through email to her. Just okay. say I grant the board a 30-day okay. uh, sure. continuance on the decision, as they gave me a 30-day.
continuance on the application and sure. everything's good. Especially we ask the building sorry. commissioner if he'd be willing to answer any questions to help him with the application. If he yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure he will. I mean, if you have trouble with any of these things, if, I'm sure if you see Ken, the building commissioner. To that one dimension. I mean, I, no, I know that. Yeah, just you just to want make, to make sure make because well, when he goes out, if it's so closer I'll, than what we granted, absolutely, I'll have Richard. We'll get back to square one. I'll have Richard. You know, yeah. as a matter of fact, the, the rear, I sort of took a measurement. It's kind of funny that the back of the deck is actually outside the setback. Mm -hmm. So when you get back to that mm -hmm. corner, right. I'll have Richard draw that on the block plan. and sure. That would be great. Make it all very clear. All right. Okay. Well, we'll see you next month. Thank well, you. Thank you. Oh, thank so you. He, we, we, we have to vote on his request. You want to keep these until next time? Okay. Can you we continue the hearing on the next June month. 2nd. I, Sean Hall, move that we continue the hearing until June 2nd. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Hall and seconded by Mr. Fit, uh, Mr. Forget. <laughs> oh, sorry. The other old guy. All in favor of continuing the hearing till our June meeting? Don't laugh. Aye. Aye. I was laughing at the wrong thing there. Okay. <laughs> Aye, Dan Heaney. Aye, Sean Hall. Aye, Ron Forget. Your next Johnny guy. Hi, Mike Fitzpatrick. Okay, great. See you next one. Okay, great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just didn't want to. No, that was a good point. A That's this, a good so. point. All right, then. Um, I'm just going to recuse myself from the uh, advisory. Okay. okay. Not a problem. Um, there was a something on here for executive session, but we're going to put that off till next month. Okay. Um, to discuss some litigation. Um, the next uh, agenda item is uh, Ray Whitehead for family convenience for a discussion. I got a question, please, about that last case. Is that going to be re-advertised? No, it, it will not be. Oh, so mm -hmm. if I want to say anything, I have to come back to the next meeting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yep. thank you very much. First thank Wednesday you. in June. Okay. How is my now? Oh. Good evening, gentlemen. If um, just for the minute taker, if you and your presenter could uh, identify yourselves for the minute taker, that would be great. My name is Ray Whitehead. I own and operate Family Convenience Center at 63 Main Street in Douglas. And this is David Feist from CMG Engineering, who's helping me design a potential uh, expansion of our operation. Okay. So we're here with uh, a situation. We have a couple of operational hazards, I would call them, uh, some obstacles uh, in, our, in our operation. The first and foremost is public safety. At our facility, we have a Dunkin' Donuts, and there's a queuing that occasionally backs up to the street. It holds nine cars. 17 years ago, nine cars were fine. It is not fine now. Uh, it is a potential hazard to the, everyone who drives down 16, and we're trying to remedy that. Uh, we also don't have enough parking space. We don't have enough dispense gas dispensers. We don't have enough cooler space. Essentially, we've outgrown our facility, the growth that we've had over the last 20 years since I've owned it. We spent the last couple of months looking at an expansion of possibly, I own the houses on either side of the store, tearing one down, expanding to the side. Uh, we are right up against a stream, Centerville Brook, and uh, we are therefore uh, subject to riverfront regulations, and that uh, generates a whole bunch of issues that kind of render that expansion uh, ineffective. Uh, by tearing down the house to the side right across from the, fire, uh, the highway department, uh, we're only going to pick up three parking spaces. I need to pick up 30 parking spaces. Um, we had the restoration of, you know, being riverfront, we, we just render so much of the land having to revert to nature again. Th this expansion just doesn't work. It doesn't solve all of our problems. So we're here to informally ask you folks what you think of what we call Plan B. Plan B is a bit more expensive. Um, I do own five 0.3 acres across the street diagonally next to the fire department at 74 Main Street on the corner of Rydell and Main Street. We'd like to start over. 
we'd like to fix all of our problems, all the traffic problems, all of everybody's issues that has to do with our site by developing a brand new gas station, work with every department in the town to make it as safe as we can make it, and, uh, and we're, we're here because we would need a variance. Right now, this area is a zone two wellhead protection. I've, I've heard it called several things, but the state refers to it as a zone two wellhead where it recharges the town wells. And there are a lot of regulations with that, both state and town. Uh, state regulations are not as cumbersome as the towns. The state merely says that you can't have underground storage tanks, either here or where I am, but I'm grandfathered in. The town regulations say you can't have a gas station, you can't have underground storage tanks, you can't have above ground storage tanks, again, at both locations. But again, I'm grandfathered in. So I'm here asking this board to consider or what we would need to do to get a zoning variance from that. If I were willing to give up a gas station I can't have, to put in a new one I can't have. Um, I have 35 year old steel fiberglass coated tanks underground 50 feet from a stream. We had an overfill last January and anything that happens there is going right into the stream. Again, my tanks are 35 years old, Massachusetts does not have a time limit on tanks. They have to be tested every year. As long as they pass testing, they're fine. Um, but they're 35 year old steel tanks in the ground. What we're proposing over here is to do above ground tanks. And uh, in the packet I sent you, I sent uh, a couple pages from the state and from the town bylaws. Uh, disclaimer, these are what I found online. I don't know if they've been modified, superseded, changed. I just wanted to do it to give you the knowledge as best I had it. Um, again, the state regulations specifically allow above ground storage tanks. So we don't feel we have any issue with the state for this zone two area if we put above ground tanks in. Above ground tanks these days have so much extra security for um, Overfill protections. Overfill protections. Yep. It would be basically state of the art brought. This particular facility would be brought up to be all of the stormwater standards, land use with high potential pollutant load, as well as keep it entirely out of the buffer zone of the river and the wetlands in the area. Whereas the existing site, the biggest hardship is the entire site's in the 100 foot riverfront zone, which under the state range really severely limits anything even upgrades to the existing stations. Mm -hmm. um, so as part of this, to, to basically design the site that would meet um, the state range, which allow above ground tanks in an aquifer protection area. Because I know under the town bylaw, I guess it's, it's in the aquifer protection area. And in that is where it specifically prohibits uh, gas stations. But again, it's for this lot as well as the one across the street. So by being able to upgrade on this site, we could make a much safer facility um, as well as basically meet all the you know, regulations on the state level. It would be safer environmentally with state-of-the-art containment systems that whatever needs to be done, the best protection we would do. It would be better for traffic because the Dunkin' Donuts queue, I think it's 14 cars to here, it would be 20 cars before it hit the street versus nine. Um, anyone who's familiar with my site, um, the, my gas dispensers are very close to the entrances. It's chaos uh, on busy times. This would allow a much better traffic flow on site and coming in and coming out. I know there's all sorts of theories of where the entrances should be and how they'd be controlled. And we don't have an opinion on exactly we're showing a concept here. This is pretty similar to somebody else who uh, applied for something similar a couple of years ago that was approved. We're merely showing it we will work with everybody to place these traffic studies, whatever needs to be done, to everybody's satisfaction for traffic flow. Mm -hmm. So our big question really is, is this something you can do 
uh, allowing this variance. Is this something that makes sense and what would we need to do to convince you this is better and safer for everybody in town? Mm -hmm. What happens with the old one? Everything uh, comes out of the ground. All the tanks come out, all the lines come out, canopy comes down, it is rendered uh, non-hazardous and there'll be nothing nothing gas related left over there what's and then the, I would what's the plan for the building uh, lease it or sell it uh, retail space restaurant whatever, whoever wants to go in there and that's all zone commercial right there right? yes it is okay. it's got septic system and everything for restaurants now I mean it, it, it's it wouldn't require a lot of work for anything you wanted to do there Also, if I may, the, um, with the above ground tanks, we do a little bit bigger tanks and we're thinking about five dispensers instead of two, which would take a lot of congestion out. And this would decrease the amount of truck traffic and uh, deliveries. Uh, currently, we get a delivery every other night. We could spread that out because we'd be able to hold more fuel. The large, little bit larger tanks would also reduce the risk of overfilling, even though there'll be a lot of overfill protection. Uh, one of the contributing factors to the spill we had a year ago was that we have to fill our tanks to the top or we won't make it through for two days. And by calling it so close every time, if it doesn't fit, you know, they got to shut it off before it overfills. That, that situation would be eliminated with these larger tanks. And tanks don't just bust open and spill their guts. I mean, it, it's rarely a tank that leaks. It's usually fittings and pipes, and, and it doesn't matter the size of the tank. You know that's going to drip it or leak at the same. And this way, above ground, we'd have a containment system. Anything spilled from any of that would go into a containment vessel, and we don't have any of that now. That doesn't exist on underground storage tanks. Mm -hmm. And we don't have an application in front of us that we can act on. But I, I th certainly think it's a a big improvement to go in this direction rather than what you currently have. You know, I don't know what we can do um, without an application for variance. Yeah, exactly. We, we just wanted to be informal feedback if, you know, before we present, if, if you, you know, did you need the traffic study done before we present? Or, I mean, we'd certainly be subject to traffic study with the planning board or who, right. whatever board. Correct. Did that You're right? I, yeah, I guess on the site plan review. Correct. correct. Yeah. 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 yeah that, Here it's just, can you give us the variance to allow that to happen? I guess is 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 you know, yeah. or any feedback towards that is what we're looking for. Well, again, I personally, we don't have an application we can act on, but yeah, it's it, very it appears similar. To, other than the gas station, is very similar to what was proposed. Similar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I don't see anything negative about it at the moment, but obviously, to, yeah. you know, we'd have and, to. And as part of the project team, too, we would have an attorney who would assist. We provide a formal application to the board for the variance documenting all the, the hardships and the specific regs that the variance would be required from mm -hmm. as part of that. But the big big thing is from a just improvement standpoint to be able to take something that's sort of existing non-conforming and right in the river for right next to the river makes something that's a lot safer and more conforming in the same area and discontinuing the other use altogether we're just being sort of moving it to this side across the street mm -hmm. we're hopeful to make you know, a much better project right. long term for the town yeah. our building's 3,000 square feet we're right here we're proposing 7,200 mm -hmm. um, you know the, the liquor we bought a liquor store two years ago we just need more space for everything Yes, Mike. What? Go ahead, Ron. Go ahead, Ron. Um, what was the uh, the existing when you move out of there? What would you, what was your plan for that? To sell it, lease it, but to remove Waterfall. the gas tanks, remove all the lines, remove the gas canopy. Uh, you know, anything related to gas would be removed and the ground restored, and then to either sell or lease the property as commercial retail uh, restaurant not a gas station not a convenience <laughs> store not a liquor store not an ice cream shop 
Not a Dunkin' Donuts, but yes. Yeah. Like, so, do they? You have current approval for that drive-up window on the existing building? Us? Yes. 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 Correct. That is so, correct. would that remain with the with the rental building or I don't know. whatever? Or I think that, that was it's approved the, for the building, not I it am, wasn't yeah, for yeah. Duncan. It, yeah. But I don't, I don't know how that works. Yeah. I, I just you're asking for. Yeah, I think it goes with for the an property. For an opinion, but that would yeah. be part of the decision making, right? Because you could potentially have two drive-throughs right across from each other, and that was a problem that came up before, right? When we had the discussion with the uh, previous applicant. Yeah. No, I'm just. I I, I'm I, just, I I feel silly standing here. Last time I was here, I was arguing against someone else doing this. Well, that, that, Irony. That's, one of the, that's one of the reasons why I brought it up, because it was a problem before, and it just should yeah. be acknowledged this time, that's right. all. Yeah. Um, yeah, the site plans, we don't have nothing to do with any of that stuff, yeah. so we all have our opinion. The site plan would be through planning. I, I think it'd be a, a good improvement to the town. It it's, mm -hmm. uh, would help his business tremendously because a lot of times you just go buy it because you can't get in the parking lot. Right. I hear that a lot. Um, it looks like he's going to have quite a few more pumps there. Are you just going to have gasoline? Or are you gonna I would like to put diesel in also. Mm -hmm. So we, we're proposing four tanks, two for regular, one super, one for diesel, and have five d dispensers, so 10 nozzles hanging yeah. um, with, I don't know, one or two with diesel. Yeah. How many parking spaces will you have? OK, th this is. Yeah, this is 48. Yep. We're not done. That's not enough. <laughs> I want this to continue all the way across the front also, and I pick up about another 20. Um, so, I, I mean, we've got about six or seven upgrades to this, but it doesn't change the, the concept. overall concept and flow. Um, and, and we want a big distance between the pumps and these spaces. I, I, I hate some gas stations where it's so tight, you're, you're fighting with the people at the pumps, and we're not doing that. We're going to give it mm -hmm. better space. Currently, our parking's on the side of the building. Everyone's going to walk around. I want nothing but spaces along the front. I, I just, I just see it as an improvement. Yeah, environmentally. Just out of curiosity, yes. you don't have propane in there. Uh, in I have On propane. That site? Or we we in, probably are yeah. for heating the building. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I just care. I looked on the air. I didn't see where your that hasn't been placed yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I would expect somewhere back here there'd be a tank and yeah. Yeah, I believe the only utility that I'm aware of is just have water in the road in front there. So, mm -hmm. uh, so a little bit. But and thankfully there was some soil testing and other stuff done in the past, and we had better than it was like less than two minute inch per material on site, and it was a system designed originally for the other project as well. So. So. So we are able, and there's five acres, we actually do have a little extra room too, if need be. So thankfully, there's plenty of room to meet all the other zoning requirements to be able to do that. So being in a wellhead area that you brought up at the beginning, who does that approval? I would say conservation, but... No, on the wellhead, you said... I, I think it's you. I, I think the issue is the zoning bylaws say you can't be restricted uses. And those restricted uses, there's two things, both a gas station is restricted, is prohibited, and uh, the fuel tanks. So again, both sites. So I believe, I believe it's this board that would give a variance to the, the zone two bylaw that restricts the gas station use and the above ground storage tanks. Basically, because we're giving one up, you, maybe just going to the state guidelines on this site. You know, we're not asking for the state to do anything. We're right. within the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was just just curious as to because you brought the well up, and we yes. don't we don't typically deal with that. I would think mm -hmm. that would be water and sewer, maybe. Mm -hmm. so they they bought that the old mobile pipeline to protect the watershed area down there. So, I don't know. We'd have to do some research on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, is that the town council we'd have to check with? On? I, I would think. Okay. Yeah. 
fix it, it could be because it is in, the, in a zoning overlay district, which is the aquifer protection district. Mm -hmm. Okay. It looks like a nice plan. I, I, I so. Yeah. So I think it'd be an improvement to the town. Yeah. Right. You have anything to add, John? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I think it'd be a great improvement to the town, just because of it. You know, I go, I drive by there a lot, and of course during the summertime, and usually the first thing in the morning, it's quite quick congested. Um, other than that, um, you no, know, I think it'd be an awesome plan for Tuttle Great, yeah. great. Then, um, so what what are our next steps? Do we need to figure out the other board, or is that something you do with the town council? Yeah, we. I mean, if you want to, we will submit submit something. Correct. We would yeah. definitely have them review it, so that we could get their guidance. Okay. Okay. Then we will make some revisions. We'll file our application mm -hmm. and uh, go forward from there. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was curious if I could. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. Yes, that uh, telephone call in the middle of right now. That was always the issue. Yeah, when are, you, when are you going to move that, John? Yeah. Uh, well, if you hit truck, it'll be fine. Um, my opinion on all of those things, I've, I've been in town 20 years, I, I work with the town. We'll, we'll, yeah. Whatever needs to be done will be done. I've heard yeah. building something around it, I've heard removing it. Um, we're here to solve safety problems, not create new ones. So if that needs to be moved, yeah. it'll get moved. Well, I'm just remember we, we got to the last time that the applicant came in. I think that was the only issue we had with him was moving the telephone call. If I, you know, it's been a long time. That's what I remember the most. Yeah, I mean that was one issue, and and yes, yes, that yeah. that needs to be resolved. And I think there was something yeah. about a drain that needed to be changed, and you know whatever mm -hmm. those things are. You want to do it right. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it right. I mean, at the end of the day, it still has to make financial sense. It still has to work. Right. If it costs go out of control, yeah. then, you know. Well, it comes down to even the river that's in be behind you. I mean, you, you, you drive through that drive through all the time. The, the water is always running there. So I can understand your um, concerns in regards to that, you know, and the, and the size of your building now, you're all growing it. So. Yep. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. The only comment I was going to make before, uh, John, was I would just like to see the plan as close to what you want to do as possible. Okay. Just. Yeah. Uh, it, like you said, you want to do some different things. I, that way we can give it yeah. a fair. Little thing. Turn opinion. the tanks. Of, but, you know, no, I know but, that. But, but yeah. I will, when we do our application, we yeah. will have cl yeah, close to final. Yeah. As we yeah. Can, Mean. Yeah, and planning board and site plan review will tweak you around a little bit. I'd just like to, yeah. to represent it fairly close yeah. to what you want. And, and as much Bob parking as it could provide, because we don't have to tell you how busy you are in the summer. Exactly. Bob you know, the when, uh, when the wall opens and whatever, it's... Yeah, yeah, we're, we'll, we're going, I think we can add some spaces here, here, and that whole row, and... Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right, one minute, Bob has something. Oh, it's Bob? Yeah. Bob and Eric, Technology Development. Uh, Ray came before the uh, pre-application tech review committee on the first plan, and we had some suggestions on that. <laughs> we're not regulatory, we're just suggestive in nature, but I think he should come before us, but before the tech review, to get some good answers to these questions. Uh, and we can steer him in the right direction. It's basically before you approach the planning board. It's pre-planning. Mm -hmm. On, on a project this size. I would like to do that yeah. and, and incorporate all of those comments and thoughts into this before we come back to them. Right, because you're sitting with the police chief, fire okay. chief, uh, highway superintendent, building inspector before that, you know, a planning board member getting input from, from yep. everybody. Who, who, can you arrange a tech review? Yeah, I, I, I arrange that. Okay, if you could please arrange a tech review, that'd be great. Right, you just let me know when you well, you already have a conceptual drawing. Yeah. So we just have to arrange a meeting. Okay. We'll get we'll get it updated too for that meeting, but okay. okay. So we'll do that. We'll modify these to incorporate any of those, then we'll come back with an application. Right.
thank you. Good, for your good luck. Sorry to keep you here so long. No, no. Thank you. I think it's a good plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's clean. It will be nice. Um, our next ad agenda item was ju just some um, discussion about North Brown, and um, there was a meeting that was represent that I represented this board, and um, the building commissioner held. There was somebody from water and sewer, somebody f from fire, somebody from highway, and we were just trying to get things on track up there for the benefit of the town and the applicant and where is that uh, North Brown uh, yep. which is the condos up off of North Street oh, oh yeah yeah yep. okay and uh, the town engineer at one point was was the, the go-to person for yeah. that and without a town engineer uh, <laughs> Ken inherited it <laughs> so you know and he and I, and I have to say he did the right thing he, right away he got somebody from all the departments together and um, you know there was some promises made by the developer and there was some feedback from many of the departments and I think Night overall Bob. it went well. Good night Bob. Overall it went well so. Uh, you want a quick update on it? Yeah if you would sure. So I was up there uh, Tuesday. Yesterday. Um, they haven't moved forward anymore with the road, the center road yet. They're still holding off on that. They're processing all of the loom on the site. They're restacking their piles. They are cleaning up the site up there. Uh, I did mention to them a couple of the, uh, I call them the mosquito bits, I forget what, rainwater cells, I think they call them. I said, they're not draining properly. What's the timeline on draining these? And I said, listen, I want, to, I want these all loomed and finished. I want this stuff done because people don't need to look around this like this yet. So they're very conducive and actually, um, Neil Roy Vicky, he actually said thank you for the meeting because he felt as though in the both different tents felt like they were a better direction on which way to go with what we're looking for. So I, I told him, you know, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, to call, you know, we can bring back to you on it. But they are moving forward with cleaning the place up up there. Good. Right. That's good for the people that are already living there. There's mm -hmm. some, almost 100 already living there? No, no, uh, uh, 60 I guess. 60 or 80 people living there, so. And 60, 80 units. Yeah. So. Um, any update on that water, water line issue that was up there? Um, it was discussed by the water department and the engineer, Lenard. Bernard is going to be uh, supervising, so they're, they're up there on every two weeks they go up. I told them I want them there every week. Uh, when they start doing infrastructure work with the water sewer, water line crossing, all that, I want them there daily. And it comes out of the 53G account for them, but I mean, that's the only right. guidance we have to make sure things are going the right way. Yeah. They have, have they given a schedule? They like did give have. a schedule. It was quite vague. It's vague. Um, but but it's a start. It's a start. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, it, it's a more conducive schedule than the first one they presented, where they said they're going to get in the big group. Yeah. So there was a lot of guidance put out, like uh, they said. I had fire there and water and sewer there, and you know, uh, Chief Vincent said, you know, I'll, I'll give you 200 feet of gravel road. That's it. You know. And uh, water sewer said, listen, I, I want the line screw and I want gate valves here and here, and I want you know. I want the system in before you start to open the system to clean. I want it done once. So that meant both sides of the room. Uh, with that, I said I can probably issue you foundation only permits for the first four units so that they can put those in. I mean, but as far as construction goes, until they have the first section of the road done, they're not supposed to be built. Right. I mean, it, was a, it was a good start. Yeah, you know. Well, I think it's an incentive for them to at least clean the place up, and if we can see progress going in a good direction, we can loosen up a little bit. Yeah. But until we see it going in the right direction, I just say, you know, keep there, keep the pedals on the metal, and make them do what they got to do. Yeah. Thanks for your efforts. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. So. Um, Thank you, Ken. 
Yeah, go ahead, John. No, he just said thanks. No, I just said thanks for Ken. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Didn't hear you. Um, the only other item we have is the minutes, which has been no, no. dragged out a bit. And That's on discussion. That's on our list of discussions. It's on the agenda somewhere. I think it's like the second or third item. I don't mind. That's what all these nice people are sitting here waiting for us. <coughs> we send them home, they're going to... Uh, I, I see don't have part anything part. on the, what Maria gave me. Right here. It's on the agenda. It's the second item. This is what Maria gave me. Right here. Huh? How did it get on there without her talking to me? I have no idea. But there, yeah, here, this is what we got. <laughs> have you seen this, Ron? On the agenda. Where did you get this? It's in my packet. And it's on the, on the email, too, that she sent, I think. So she probably revised the agenda and she didn't tie it. Where is it? So it's uh, the second item right there. Oh. What are we talking about now? On the second item, there's a, uh, uh, it's under discussion. So I guess we're not going to make any decision on it. Uh, so. It's just a request for a clarification for an in-house business in the RA zone, 7 Hilltop Drive. Um, did you did you get anything in your packet, John? No, that's what I'm looking for right now. Right? Mm -hmm. I picked mine up. Um, actually, actually, I think it was emailed to us. Hey John, just just fair warning that your uh, battery's in the red. <laughs> so so if we lose you, there's nothing personal. So let's no, see. No, the only thing I got on here is locked on the GBA and the approval of the man. That's all I got on mine. And I'll be honest, once I got these, I I thought I had it all. Yeah. So, yeah. So did I. Let me just look. We can discuss this. Uh, where the heck is this thing? When did I see it today? Did I see it? Oh no. No, we didn't get it. We didn't get a copy of that thing. I, I seen it. We didn't get it sent to us. So, no, we have all the, we you have. You have the form? Four gentlemen sitting in the room. I just yep, remember. yep. So that's the uh, the form that was given to us, yeah, which, is, which is the same as this. And there's a letter on the back side of it. Bear with us for a couple minutes. Yeah, no problem. You want on this? You want yours back? Thank you, So, one of us probably should read it so John can understand it. Sure, please. <clears throat> Did you hear all that? I just finished. <laughs> one minute, uh, John.
Sorry, I just hadn't seen this until yeah. right now. Right. It's not even on my agenda, so. so. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Hilltop Drive? Down, you go down Southwest Main Street, take a right on High Street, heading towards uh, Webster. It's up there on the right hand side. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. That's me, that road there. Yeah. So, so John, what, what we have here is, is um, the applicant, they, well, he hasn't applied. And the gentleman that came in and is coming in before us started off as a hobby doing 3D printing with himself and uh, th three of his boys, or oh, two of his, uh, his young sons, I'm assuming is how many they were. Yep, a couple. Um, there's more than one anyways, there's an S on the end. Um, he's a background, he's a mechanical engineer, he purchased a commercial grade uh, consumer 3D grade. printer. I'm sorry, consumer grade. Oh, com consumer grade. <laughs> sorry. It's an important yeah, distinction. I don't want, yeah, that, that's critical with John because he'll, he'll stay on that. So it's a consumer grade uh, machine for doing 3D printing. That's the, the size and scale of it, the machine right here. So I know John probably, I don't know if he can see it, if he's looking on the camera, but that's... No, he can't see it. So it, it's a small little 3D printer uh, that he has. And what he did is he, he uh, what do you call those things that you actually made before you put the... These are what I actually make. They're, they're nightlight covers that yeah. when, you, when you print them and then pass a light through them, it's a little hard to see in here, but they right. become the photographic image. Yeah. And I make these out of all kinds of images. I buy the night lights and yeah. then I, I put them together and fun. Yep. people pay a little bit of money for them. Yeah. <clears throat> so he has a little, he has a, a little hobby type business that um, he makes these little covers for night lights. Okay. And the building inspector gave him, um, he'll have to give us the background information how he, how this came about. But um, he's been doing this for, what, about a year, you said? Uh, a little over a year. Yeah, a little over a year. He's made about 100 of them, um, or sold 100 of them. He's made about 150 units. Um, and he, he came, he must have come in for some sort of business certificate, and uh, the uh, building official considered it manufacturing use not allowed in, in an RA zone appendix A line one page three or four um, which is that one that we're talking about doing manufacturing inside the buildings that we had looked at uh, with that zoning change that we did so the, so I guess what he's looking for is the uh, determination is that this falls under the manufacturing classification um, and can he, can he do this out of his house um, so that that's a Sorry. that's a quick explanation. If the uh, it'll be up to the chairman uh, because you're coming in for an opinion, so I want to make sure that he wants you to speak okay. um, on it. Um, but that that's just a little brief overlay of what it is, John. So. All right. Well, what street is this on? Hilltop. Up off of, Hilltop, up off a of high street, down the other end of Southwest Main Street, or the old Thompson Road. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Yep. Well, is there a customer coming to your house? No. Nope. Uh, do you do this with UPS and FedEx and all that? How do you ship them out? Uh, U.S. Postal. You go to the post office? No, they take them from my mailbox. Yeah, yeah. So he ships the them out with the postal service. They pick it up on their normal delivery? Is yes. that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Wow. I honestly don't have a opinion right now. I just, I'm trying to think of it. I mean, the size of this thing can't be very big. No, no, no. The uh, night light covers are about four inches square. Um, yeah. But the unit that he's using is, uh, it looks to be about the uh, overall dimension of the speaker that's in our resource room of what he held up, maybe even a little smaller than that. Yeah, definitely smaller. Yeah, a little smaller than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're small units, but it comes down to um, do we consider that a um, manufacturing a manufacturing use in an RA zone 
because <coughs> uh, hold on one minute, John. Can I ask him a question? Who's that? Why the applicant? Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this gentleman. Why are you applying for this? Because um, a lot of people that purchase them from me, uh, frankly, uh, don't use um, electronic payments. Yeah. They want to pay with check, so I'm constantly, not constantly, but often receive a written check, and because I have a website and they see the business name, they make it out to the business name. The bank won't let me cash those and without you, having an account with a business name, and I need a business certificate to get the account. Right, right. Because, because you're a DBA, you're not a corporation. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, John, what he needs, he well, he the name of his company is 3D Glow Lights. Uh, yeah. That's a well, that's the website. So people assume that that's the name of the company. So when they purchase these things, they send him a check. It comes in as 3D Glow Light. Now he has a piece of paper he can't do anything with because he has no account and he can't put a business check into a personal account. He can't open up a business account because he has no business certificate. Right. So he's got a whole bunch of night lights. <laughs> so, yeah. So can I, can I speak? With? Yeah, go right ahead. So I, I wanted to clarify that, and it states it in my letter, but um, I think the definition of manufacturing, at least what I see in the bylaw, is you know it says including processing, fabrication, and assembly. Right. So. That covers a really wide range of stuff. And I don't want to get to intent, but I think the intent is that to keep people from doing industrial manufacturing on a scale where I have delivery trucks coming in and out, I have customers coming in and out, I have signage, anything like that. This is truly um, a craft hobby that we're able to offset the, the costs of by you know selling some of them. Mm -hmm. So I liken it to you know, people doing sewing in their homes and selling quilts or jewelry assembly, you know, those types of craft hobbies that they may do out of their home. And um, full disclosure, it's my first ever zoning meeting. I've never had to look at a bylaw before. But there's a, there's a section in there called accessory uses for home that kind of spells out for um, home occupation, which I understand to be business use in the home that kind of spells out a lot of things here that, you know, I meet all of them. It speaks to, um, you know, exterior signs, excessive smoke or vibrations or all those things. I mean, my neighbors would never know that this is happening. I don't have plans to go to an industrial scale. It's, um, it's certainly completely fine and normal for people to do 3D printing in their home um, as a hobby. So. The difference is that I'm selling some of them. Ken, did you have any? The only, the only concern I had with it is you know, the definition of the manufacturing and the scale and scope of what he could potentially do if he did have the certificate there. Now, I understand you look at a couple of machines. Yeah. But I mean, you know, if, if you're like most entrepreneurs, your, your hopes that maybe it could grow into something that maybe you're not running, but your kids could run or something like that. So at what point does it not become a home business and become a manufacturing business? And then you've got to contend with the neighbors in the neighborhood because now if you're getting increased flow of packaging going out, materials coming in, more machines on tables, even though the table model, you know, where does it, I just don't know what the guidance is as to where it goes, where it works. When does it have to go into a total building? I understand, yeah. I do understand that. I think that could be a concern with any type of, and I don't know what's registered for businesses in this domain in the town already, but that could be a concern for anyone. I'm, I'm, I'm knitting quilts, now I add machines. Now I add four sewing machines. When does it become, you know, a nuisance? basically to a residential area. I, I totally understand and appreciate the intent because I wouldn't want a you know, machine shop running next to my house. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I guess I, I don't know. That's why I'm here looking for, for, for some guidance here. Hey, go ahead, John. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, and, you know, the, the term manufacturing, that is, in fact, that, that is what you're doing. Um, 
and Yeah, I guess I would question to you what precludes me from. Oh, I don't want to get myself in trouble, but not, no, if, it, if it, I don't, if I'm not able to get the business license for accounting purposes and banking, what precludes me from doing this as a personal matter and selling them to my, you know, as income to myself without a business license? Nothing. And and at that point, then. That that part of it, I mean, if you decided to say, so if you're currently online, currently you're sold online, you would just write off the check. You put on the bottom of the check and they get off to, you know, Jill Smith on the bottom, um, Jill Smith DBA, um, that's something the bank would have to, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, so the bank advised me that I, I needed the business certificate in order to get the account where I could cash the checks because I you know I've had them and and I've gone over this a couple times and and they turned me away so it just creates confusion with the with the with the people buying them you know the website is 3d glow light um, not everybody's comfortable paying online or with the credit card so you know they um, yeah. will some people want to mail me a check um, wow. The banking laws have changed as such that he's extremely accurate on that. I have a lot of different subs that I deal with that run into the same problem. If you're not incorporated, you have to have a business certificate with the town mm -hmm. in order to get a checking account. It's not any different than having... Uh, not necessarily. A lot of different. So the business that I had, that I sold, whatever, it was um, business certificate and the business certificate was different than and I've always just paused it that way. My business was in an old town when I was working from my house. You know what I'm saying? How long ago was I that? Ah, uh, was it been 10 years? Well, that's what I'm saying, is the banking laws have changed yeah. as such that you can't, yeah. you can't do any of that anymore. That's, that's the problem that he's running into. The, yeah. the problem, so, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. No, go right ahead. Um, by definition, I'll agree with John that it's manufacturing, but I'll also agree with you that this isn't what we in, think of, envision as manufacturing, mm -hmm. a, as a textile mill or, or something like that, sure. or something on a large scale. Um, the only the only trouble I have is the, the point that you brought up, which I thought before you brought it up. Um, how do you keep it so it stays as your suggesting as, as a hobby type business because once you have your business certificate he has no way of enforcing hey you got Amazon's coming here 47 times a day and your neighbors are freaking out and they're like, well you gave me a business certificate I, 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 I can be here and so, so that's uh, yeah I'm just, just trying to ex explain to this gentleman that I want to thank him for his honesty because it's just something that not shutting them down it's opening up a new account right no, that's what the banks are doing now they're making it trying to avoid uh money laundering yeah, and other things let me, let me say this too because i've always done this too it was sometimes it was chain of property management and i was on the deposit only two and i put that checking coming up number in it you know so so i mean 10 years is a lot but uh, i don't have an opinion on this yet until i are reaching deeper yes yeah, so i think it's confusion because I mean, it's not making a million dollars at this. Um, we could develop to that, but you don't want to risk the residential area, you know, so. Well, no, I, I like the, the whole idea that he came up with. It gave him something to do with his boys. 
um, yeah. teaching teach them about business, being responsible, and, and things like that. Yeah. The, the only the only concern I have is how do you prevent it from becoming a full fledged <laughs> business yeah. in, in a residential area? Because we really want to be fair to you. I totally understand to that neighbors, so, and so. appreciate the spirit of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't know how to put you know guarantees in place other than me saying that's that's not the idea and. If something were to ever happen where somebody called me and said, hey, I found your website, I want to order tons of these, that'd be great because now I can go rent a, a commercial facility and buy extra machines and maybe I quit my day job, but I don't think That's, I see that happening and I don't have the you know, capacity to do it out of my house. But. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead, Ron. That's exactly what I was going to say. You know, he's starting out very small, right? Hopefully he can create something if it, if it goes his way. I don't have a problem with something that small. I mean, look at all the um, prime trucks and all that kind of stuff. He's not going to have that now. It's a small little thing, mm -hmm. right? If, if, if he gets a chance to make it bigger and now he's got to have a, uh, a bigger facility, you, don't, you wouldn't want, want it in his home if he, met, if he goes and, and, and develops all thousands of these things. So, but, I mean. But a, if it, it does, evolve into that there's a transition point from from one to the next right yeah that, and that's all we're, we're New York well out. that's that's his the, that's his option when 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 it, when it gets to that point he's not going to want to do it out of his house he's going to do it as long as he can to keep overhead down so if it <laughs> well i mean i'm just being real i'm not yeah no you're, you're, I'm, not, I'm not trying to a be a, a smart guy with you it, nothing it's just if it helps at all you know in a in a box this size yeah i could receive the material to make Literally this size, 3,000 of these. It comes on a roll, it's, you know, right. yep. 25 grams. Um, so even at a, at a scale that would way outpace what I could do at home, at least currently, I understand you said yep. that you could add machines. I could, but it's it's very little material. It's, it's yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, so I... I well, I appreciate I'm just, it, I'm just, how but I just think ultimately, you know, manufacturing means really making anything. It doesn't specify the scale of it, and I would just yeah, say, it could be, yeah, it could be anything, like, uh, you, know, you know, anybody in town who might do this kind of craft stuff, cricket machines, jewel, hand jewelry assembly, that's manufacturing by that definition, because yeah. um, you're not taking into account the scale, and I, I I don't think that's the intent, so... No, and, and judging by everybody's comments, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's hung up on the manufacturing point. I, I think what I heard Just from myself control. and other people is what the potential of it could be and what the impact would We're be. We're all wishing you well. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, one more thing. If I could, um, I'm a gentleman with regards to, if it got to a point where he had yeah so let, let me give you one other data point that's a real barrier to to scalability is that each one of these on a machine takes eight hours to make it's a very slow process the, and if you go faster you lose the quality so I don't so yeah. scalability right there is you know how many machines could you fit how many could you run a day you know what would your power panel uh, yeah. you know accommodate you know so there is some physical limitation there as well in this process yeah. I understand yep Yep. Yeah, but there's a cross. There's a crossing point too. Mm. So yeah, so this is it, it, a, this is a, a small startup thing. It's a small startup thing, but it, it's a it's somewhat unique to what other home businesses are that have come in. I think that's where where our problem may be. Um, would this require an actual application for him to to get a variance, a use variance for this because? Technically, it is manufactured just by your own definition of what you do. Um, 
you you make the shades, you buy the lights, you assemble them together, you, you, and you went through the definition of manufacturing, you know, it was everything that you said that you did with the lights. So there's probably so 100 people it, in town doing similar things right. that are not yeah. as upfront as he's been. Right. You know? Yeah. 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 I'm just trying there's, to figure out people how to help you get town to making these. where you need to be. <laughs> yeah. So I, I understand That's what I'm saying. So he, he can, can can outgrow you. that. I, I can tell you that if it came to applying for a variance and going through the process that I witnessed earlier, I, I wouldn't do it. I just, it's it's not gonna be the, something that's worth it for the, the yeah, I understand there's advertisements, so you have to notify mm -hmm. people. I just, it's, it's. Yeah, well, you say that you wanna go through it, but it would be a process, if it wasn't you and it was your neighbor that wanted to do the same thing, you should be afforded the right to be able to come in and, and voice your concern. You know, this guy, he's got the, the mail truck comes up here 14 times a morning. Um, I whatever. Uh, just to be fair to your neighbor, that's what this whole process is about. Um, on a small scale, I don't see a lot of op opposition even from your neighbors, but I don't know. I, I'm not up there. I don't know. Um, what the whole process means. It sounds they, they, extremely simple. Yeah, on the, on the scale, there would be no way they could even know it was happening. Yeah. But I, under, I understand and respect the concern that yeah. if I went nuts and violated what we're talking about in this discussion, it would, could be a different scenario. Yeah. But if you went out of control, we're putting him into a position to try to figure out he's a zoning enforcement agent. So that's why I'm pointing at him. Um, we're putting him into a position to make a determination of, so when does that happen? Um, when, so, mm -hmm. to be fair to everybody, your neighbors, yourself, I, I personally don't have a problem with what you're doing I today, um, but we have to acknowledge the potential of, of being something else, and I, I think that it would, if you wanted to do this, it would have to go through a formal process. Yeah. For sure. What do you Ron, what is it, what's your regular occupation? I'm a mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer? That's right. Okay. So, no offense. You, you, have, to sell an off, you have to sell an awful lot of those to yeah. make more money. Yeah. Give up his no, day. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And he's going to be health health insurance. Insurance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd have to sell an awful lot. So. Well. That's going to be a few dollars to do this, too, to put an application on. Yeah, that's, yep. Yeah, I don't think there's enough meat on that bone for me. Amazon, we see FedEx, we see UPS. They're right out town every day, seven days a week. It's still your neighborhood. Yep. But that's, that, that, that's a, that's a no-brainer right there. That, that it's going to be, yeah. that's going to be all the time, John. You got... Yeah. How many how many of those trucks go by my place every day? Uh, right, they go by down my little street. Yeah, they go some, down some where you get live. deliveries yeah, every so day. You're not gonna you're not gonna stop that. And this is, you know, this is in one tenth of one hundred thousand percent. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I would have to investigate further to make a conscious decision. I guess. Um, yeah, in all in all fairness. I, I no, none of these guys knew knew anything that was coming in until now they're trying to digest it at the same time of listening to it. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. As a suggestion, you may you may want to. Um, I would I would probably put on your website if you're going to make a check out, make it off of this this guy. Yeah. So, a, a big part of my business as well is word of mouth, and frankly, yeah. a, a lot of senior citizens that don't even go on the website. They will call, yeah. physically call me, and uh, you know it's it gets confused and it's just it, it would be a very nice thing if I could have my business set up with the name so that I can mm -hmm. get everything straight that way. But sorry, I, I, sorry, I can't make a decision, but, but I just I feel that uh, it's still manufacturing and you're still in the neighborhood, so. Oh Jesus, this is so far from manufacturing and ain't even funny. Jeez. This is something we want to. I don't know if we could table it and take it up. To the next meeting. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I hear where he's coming from, and I, I, I appreciate him coming in and being honest about it, but I, there's, 
I'm, I'm sure 100 people doing what similar to what he's doing, whatever it may be, and not being as straightforward, straightforward as he's, as he's yeah. been. You know, um, yeah, there's all kinds of little things, whether it's sewing garments or all this other kind of stuff. So I guess, and, and I don't want to dwell too far into the legal side of things, but if, if we said, you know, it doesn't look good as far as getting the business certificate, so I say, okay, I see the writing on the wall, does that mean I'm not allowed to make them in my house? Or I'm not allowed to sell them? Or what does that mean for what I'm doing? I mean, I can make them for myself. It's a machine you buy from Amazon right. yeah. <laughs> or, or somewhere online. Tons of people have them and do it as a hobby. So is that's clearly allowed, I, I think. You can have a hobby, yeah. But does that mean I can't sell them or I just cannot have a business certificate? Well, we, we can't guide you, <laughs> guide you into okay. that. Okay. That would, that would come down to the... Okay. Because my, my dotted line um, conclusion there would be nobody can make anything in their house and sell it at that point. And that feels wrong. Yeah, you can't even write a book. Yeah, that'd be wrong. I understand your feelings. But again, it's a residential area. So, it's a lot of laws that cover it. And we've had these by laws for a long time. Yep, understood, and I'm yeah, the, new to the I, whole I, thing. So I, I think the the biggest thing is 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 the potential in not knowing how to regulate it. I yeah. think I think it is what the only stumbling block you have. I don't, I personally don't have a problem with what you're saying you're doing. I, I have no idea what you're doing. Right. Um, but there's also a potential of it getting much bigger, and then that could be a problem for your neighbors. Um, I don't even know if your neighbors know you're here tonight, so we don't even know how they feel. No, no you I'm didn't like mean everybody. It. I don't talk to It's anybody. just <laughs> the chairman didn't even know that you were coming tonight. Right. So <laughs> I, I doubt very much that your neighbors no, know no, that no, you they were don't. coming. They so don't. Um, I guess if you're real serious about it, the best thing to do would be to apply for it, no? Ben? I Yeah, I guess. I, I, just, uh, just to I mean, afford I see everybody the opportunity to... And you may find that everybody's in favor of it, and you, you invested a few bucks, and you're off and running. You just have to make a bunch more. Probably another 20. Mr. Chairman, if I could. Go ahead, John. If, I mean, if he does fill out an application, I would probably run this by Coast Town Council before we, you know, further it. Um, as again, we, we've approved we're going to for a hairdresser up on Depot Street. I just I remember all the ones we've ever did in a small business. This one's kind of tough. So yeah, they had customers. That's manufacturing. That's that's a key word is manufacturing. Mm -hmm. it, but they have people coming and going in the in the beauty parlor and stuff. And I mean, yeah. there's there's people at home that are doing wedding cakes. Right. Yeah. Are they they're manufacturing cakes? Yeah. I mean, I don't. I I really don't know what. The, I don't but know what the right thing to do is. Technically, by definition, it's manufacturing, but it is in no way what I consider manufacturing. Right. Yeah. No, I wouldn't either. Yeah. So I'm not even hung up on that. I'm just as to what the impact would be to the neighborhood and what their feedback would be. And. Just trying to find a way to get over, not to get around anything, but to legalize it, if you know what I mean. Yep. Well, I get the same thought process, but I, I, I don't have an answer at the moment. But I, I don't. No, that's what I mean. So, if, uh, if the gentleman wanted to throw an application, I think that would facilitate us to look into it a little bit deeper, and of course, you can contact Tom Council and see what he says. We can't, we can't go on speculation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We, Ken's got a. Ken's got a comment. Yeah. I think oh, with a, if we filled out an application, I'm you know, just sitting here on the side, filled out an application, at least perhaps it would give some guidance, if not in this particular one in the future, as to what that manufacturing is going to denote for a home business, mm -hmm. for a home use. You know, what would be allowed? You know, uh, you know, could be, you're doing lithographs, the next person might be, oh, I'm just doing the steel to make pools. I'm just, I'm just rolling up steel for pools or whatever. I'm making cue balls, you know. But what is 
what is the guidance? Where where are we going to be at with that manufacturing? Yeah, I agree. Or home hobby manufacturing. Right, because right. the home hobby thing, anybody that, like I said, sewing or homemade jewelry, right. it's all manufacturing. So. Yeah. Yeah. I would be. I would feel more comfortable making a decision, knowing the input of the people that it actually affects. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's, from what he describes, there's no effect. But right. at the same time, I think they should be afforded the right to. So, to let me just say on that. I know you guys probably want to be done with this. Like no, no, no. That's you. fine. You're Is that right here? So you do it. I, I don't want to speak for those people, but I, I would venture to guess that any residential homeowner would say the same thing you might say, which is, I, I'm fine with it because I don't see it or know it. At the point where it becomes a nuisance, then I'm not fine with it. How, what are we going to do then? You know, because this, yeah. I, I'll go back to your point, there's really no way to regulate what I'm saying so, I'm so, doing. So right. when you get a decision from us, we can impose conditions to that decision. Oh, okay. Right now you're asking us for an opinion whether or not to allow him to give you a business certificate and sign off on a business certificate with the town clerk, correct? Yes. Yeah. We can't we can't regulate that at all. You're just asking us for an opinion. But when you come in you fill out an application, we can put up whatever in our decision, we can add our conditions to it. Same as the guy that just came in with this gas station. We can do the same thing. We can add mm -hmm. conditions to that. Um, so then that gives the zoning enforcement agent the ability to say, whoa, 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 you're not supposed to have trucks coming in and out of here. Employees. You said that you were only going to ship through the UPS on that one delivery. If you start having Amazon come up, UPS, FedEx, all these other companies, yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. he can come up and stop you in your tracks and say, you need to figure out something else. That that was what would happen in that. Okay, I understand. I, I think it's more of just an understanding of what you want to do to um, protect the, the nature of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, and being able to regulate it, and I think that's that's probably your best path to get to that point. Yeah. Okay. Now, can I ask a question? Sure, you can. To your point, what's the difference in what he's doing if he has somebody deliver those what he needs and, and so forth, or picks them up and sell them? Then one of my one of my neighbors having Amazon drop off stuff at his house three or four times a week. What is the difference? Because we don't have it in our zoning code, code to regulate purchases. That's your neighbor purchasing stuff and that's how it gets delivered. We have no way of regulating that. What he's, what he's proposing is to run a business. It's the opposite side of it. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, well, Believe me, if I could get rid of Amazon, I'd be voting for it. <laughs> they got stuck in my backyard and I don't even get Amazon. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just. One thing you gotta consider is can be shipping and the, 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 the people that Ron's talking about is receiving. Right, yep. Two different things, yeah. Yep. Two different things. It's not two different things. It's it's a truck picking his stuff up, and another truck delivering, and and at, at my neighbor's five or six times a week. Correct. And then what I had so, said was we have no regulation on you purchasing as many things as you want, but we do well, it, have. It, 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 it's just well, yeah, lack no. of common sense. Lack of common sense. Okay. So, so. We'll have to put it in the bylaws that nobody in town is allowed. Oh, yeah, to we got to have a bylaw. Yep, yep, we <laughs> no, got to have a bylaw. You mean that's <laughs> no, you, you just, never mind. Okay. No. Yeah, I think we killed this conversation already. Yeah, I think we no, can. I, do you have a clear understanding as of what? I do, so, I do. So. And so it'll be up to me to decide whether to Absolutely. put a yeah. formal Crazy. request in. Yeah. yeah. I would dig into the legal part of it with, uh, with the banks first, if I were you. I, I have. He's not going to go anywhere with that. That's what the yeah. rule is, John. So, oh, okay. yeah, that's yeah. what the rule is. The, the bank, the banking world has changed tremendously, yeah. and okay. and not All too right. near in the future, where you probably won't see paper money anymore. Yeah. They're trying to get rid of all that. I wish we could have been more help to you, but all I. Right. No, I, I appreciate the discussion and your time. I know it's late. Hopefully, it was uh, your yeah, lights on.
So, sorry, sharing that with me. Um, no, hopefully that was helpful. Sorry, we couldn't give you a direct answer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Any yeah. questions? Yeah. Thanks. Good. Thank All you. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So I'll move. All right, we have a motion by Mr. Forger, second by Mr. Fitzpatrick to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 John? Aye. 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 At, at uh, 9.50. Aye, Dan Heaney. Hmm? Well, that's because you kept talking, John. <laughs>